short and a link. The link is too long. Welcome to Apology Alive, where a former Christian takes a look at the claims of Christians live from here from Apology Studio in rugged Nova Scotia, Canada. Although today we are from dual locations. We are in Nova Scotia, Canada. We are also in Texas, um, America. That's how we say that, right? Texas, America. That's, That's exactly right. how you say it. <laughs> joining joining me tonight are Shannon Q. And Hello. Ar and Arden Hart. Hello. And Matt Dillahunty. Hello. All of whom you may know from the internet. <laughs> the Intron webs. Yeah. <clears throat> we are here today to talk about Marvel comics and movies we're here to talk about answers in genesis we're here to talk about theism we're here to talk about whatever you guys bring up in uh in the fundraiser questions which you know you guys will drive that or just anything we want because this is a fun stream we're not trying to uh have a rational conversation with the theist or anything like that or just actually debunk anything or to solve any kind of cancer, but we are here to solve and hopefully raise money for MS Walk, which Shannon yeah. and I are doing next month. Shannon, tell everyone about MS Walk and the charity that we are gathered here together for. So the MS Walk raises money for the Multiple Sclerosis Society. Uh, it's in the, the one that we're doing is in Canada because that's where we live. And I have multiple sclerosis. So it's something that is close to my heart. And I try to do it every year to raise money for the MS Society. I am one of the lucky ones who can still, you know, do most everything, but it still does impact me on a daily basis in ways that I don't often publicly discuss, but am willing to if people have questions. Um, and it's a really great charity. It doesn't only help with research, but it helps with people who are actively living with the disease today. People like me who need additional supports, uh, whether or not it's like accommodations in their home or if they need like a walker or if they need therapy, they, they help with a multitude of things. And this is the biggest fundraiser that they have every year. And I'm not sure if people are aware about this, but I am exceptionally competitive. And right now my team is the number one team in Canada. Paul joined my team today. So I am very, very, very much hoping that we can utilize this fun stream that we're all having together today to through my team and either, either my link on my channel or Paul's link on his channel uh, to raise more donations for the MS Society. Yeah, that's my team. That's how much my team has raised so far. And I'm really excited about it. Initially, I had a goal of $1,000, and I thought that was really, really lofty. I was like, there's no way I'm going to raise $1,000. And I raised that in a, in a couple of weeks. Um, so I'm hoping that I can hit my $5,000 goal, like within, at least before the walk, which is in May, maybe. Tomorrow, oh, maybe. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> yeah. We're, we'll get there for sure. <laughs> maybe it would be but, cool. But here's the thing. Shannon and I are both very competitive. <laughs> and so we have the Apologia goal for tonight. <laughs> so if you want okay. to donate to team Apologia, you go to the link in the description. And you can post to my team. Now, ultimately, all this money goes to Shannon's team. It doesn't matter. But for the purpose of crediting tonight, <laughs> if you are on team, no coffee table. <laughs> team, no coffee table. Team pick my coffee. link. And team coffee table, I guess you can go to Shannon's channel or look in the description. That's not team. even my actual link, though. That's the team. I haven't raised that much money. I only have $700 raised on my right, link. But, but, uh, but we'll see. That's we'll my be whole able to team. See. You're padding... The numbers right now, sir. <laughs> oh, but it makes you look more impressive. That's that's all good. <laughs> My link only has seven hundred dollars. I am anyway. now on Team No Coffee Table. Oh, excellent! What? Um, I, we are asking not, for, not with uh, regard to the MS Walk stuff, but we recently oh, like cleaned like... up the whole house in preparation mm -hmm. for guests and everything else. And I, every time I look at the coffee table, I'm just like. All that thing does is give me an excuse to stack more shit in the house that I don't ever look at. Then just stop doing it. Well, okay. Yeah. And then just, why I are you will. hurting me? Like and, then, <laughs> and then what do I need a coffee table for if I'm not going to do that? It's a nice place for drinks and food. Yeah. You can say I've almost the kicked floor. over his mug 700 times already this week. <laughs> it's because it's I, always. 
somewhere around the periphery of the couch on the floor. Oh, yeah. I would never, if it was on the floor, I would kick it over all the time. I definitely need a, a coffee table or end table at the very least. But he's knocked over his own drink. <laughs> but never knocked when, over. when it's on the floor, you're not going to break it. If that cup was on a coffee table and you knocked it over, mm -hmm. you might break it. You would have to work so much harder. The chances <laughs> are, are so, so in, insurmountably like minuscule. If it's on a, like, you'd have to try. You have to put if some it, effort in. Like we would have that, to be like having a fist fight. The huge dive from like a foot <laughs> off the ground, you know, <laughs> instead Valid. of being on the ground. Valid. And also if it's near the couch, then that means when it spills, you have to move the couch because now you have to clean underneath the couch. Otherwise uh, it gets sticky and you'll get. Why is that not a good thing? If you don't move the couch <laughs> and clean, clean underneath and behind the couch on occasion, I'm not saying all you you're doing is setting up for a real big surprise the next time. Uh, exactly. Arden says, That's "Hey, let's man. rearrange the living room." The, the I'm not room saying you should doesn't... never clean under your couch. I'm saying you have to do it more often than is necessary if you're constantly constantly kicking <laughs> drinks over underneath it. There. Seems like you'd be doing it exactly as often as is necessary. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that would otherwise be necessary if a coffee table was present. Could people right. just donate to my link to make me feel like <laughs> so? <laughs> we are not doing. Uh, we're not doing super well. Uh, super chats, as you can see. Super Chats can be accepted this evening, but what we prefer is that you go to one of the MS Walk links and donate there. And if you comment on your donation there, we will absolutely read it out loud on screen yeah. if it's you appropriate. If it's appropriate. And it's for charity, so be appropriate. But <laughs> Skeptics and Scoundrels did say, fun isn't something one considers when talking about answers in Genesis, but this does put a smile on my face. Well, thank you, Eric. Appreciate Aww. that. He just Eric. left here. Like yeah, he how, was at our house earlier Eric, today. how have you got time to jump in and do this? He stayed last night so that he could check out the eclipse with us, which was nice. Awesome. Well, ostensibly, we are here in a way to talk about Answers in Genesis. Now, Answers yes. in Genesis is a creation ministry started by Ken Ham, and they are the creator of the Giant Ark Encounter attraction and the Creation Museum in Kentucky. Now, they, a few years ago, during the start of COVID, they were they couldn't get as many people out to their attractions. So what they said, you know what's hot? Netflix and streaming <laughs> services. So they decided while while their attractions were down that they would start their own streaming service, which I'm guessing most people don't know exists, but absolutely exists. It's called Answers TV. It's their very own Netflix. Wait. And for that. Sorry, wasn't there already a Christian Netflix and now there's an Answers Netflix as well? That's you correct. didn't know that they have a strip, Matt. You oh, are missing out all of this on garbage. the worst <laughs> television you've ever seen, mm. and it's glorious. You it's so really, bad. I'm so ready. really need to have a conversation <laughs> with me about how little time I spend listening to the absolute worst apologist on the planet. <laughs> Well, speaking of which, they uh, they also license all the Ray Comfort material, and you can watch that there as well. So that's, that's well, on there. <laughs> where do I sign up for that? <laughs> I would just like to say that I just got a $50 donation. Thank you, Ooh. Martin Harvey. Yeah. And it says, so tell Paul to bite the bullet. If you raise more today, the coffee table happens. Ha! Hit refresh. Oh. I I'm refresh. telling the okay. truth. <laughs> I believe Thank you, you. Martin. I oh. think I may have to... Go to and then a... go to donations. Oh, there, there you go. go. There he is. I'll figure this out. Yay! Not quite Thanks, as clean as... Thank you for your 1360. I appreciate you as well. Thank you. You didn't have anything to read. <laughs> I just... Good job. Yeah. Good job, team. Shannon was right. I appreciate you. Team Shannon was right. <laughs> um, That's the team I'm on. <laughs> yes. That's right, Arden. Somebody... And I Love couldn't it. really answer this appropriately because i didn't decide on this but somebody in chat wanted to know why i was thanos and i don't i don't know what paul's reason was but i think it's because i'm the one most likely to kill half the universe <laughs> i think that is objectively true amongst the four of us <laughs> yeah at least, at least out of this pool of people here for literally sure. if one of us was gonna snap <laughs> I You're think the I snapper. Could, I think I would justify it. I, <laughs> you could. I don't think you I'd could. rationalize it quite the way he does. Plus, I've got like the grimace chin beard thing, so that's true. I wouldn't work as well as Captain Marvel. Mm. Can we talk about Arden as Scar like can we now? I the bob cut. Hello. Is this mm -hmm. happening? Mm -hmm. Is this coming? 
Like you need the Sergio bar. I was like, Arden, what the fuck? I'll be in my bunk. <laughs> <laughs> Sun's getting real low. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and uh, evidently, Arden had a thing for Mark Ruffalo. So, oh, that's I mean, you have a thing for somebody. It's a good thing. Yeah. We we it's watched a, a reactional watch thirteen going on thirty earlier mm -hmm. today with Jennifer Garner and Mark Ruffalo, yeah, and yeah. I, that came out when I was like nine or something Aww. like that. And I was like, oh my god, turn into an adult woman. That is what I want. <laughs> Nine year old kid, and to get to be with Mark Ruffalo. All right, let's go. Um, Where do I sign? So, now, did you change your mind after watching Poor Things? I haven't I watched it. I don't, I don't think I've watched that one. Yeah, oh, no. Should. Poor oh, Things that was be. the the Netflix show that won the awards, right? Emma Stone. No, it was got the, an Emma Oscar. Stone. Right, Emma right, Stone right. won. Uh, yeah, Best Actress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or oh, I want to watch it, but I don't know anything about. He it. was not a good person in Poor Things, but he he, like, is, he was great. Yeah, in he's that. counter to type, and and if were if it were not for Robert Downey Jr., he is who I would have voted for for Best a Supporting Actor this year for sure. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, we've been we've been talking about wanting to watch it. We just haven't made the time. So make time. Shannon and I have a tradition that we've done since we started since I moved here. And that is uh, that we and I've had this tradition for quite a long time. I try and see every movie nominated for Best Picture before the Oscars start, before the mm -hmm. ceremony starts. Fun tradition. Yeah. So I've dragged Great. Shannon into this and you end up watching all kinds of weird movies that you would normally never watch. And sometimes they're terrible and sometimes they are amazing. So, yeah, it's good. American Fiction was the best one we watched. I need to duck out for 30 seconds because okay. I think a prescription just got delivered to the front door, even though they didn't tell me that was going to happen. Rut roll. <laughs> it's okay. Happens all the time. They, lo they love to wait until this time of the day, right when all the shows of everything start to, to start delivery. It's <laughs> real fun. I got another donation. Oh, yes. another donation. From Dr. Kip, who has something he would like me to read on air. Uh oh, I, uh... I, I would like you to refresh and read it yourself, Paul. Uh, oh, you got to oh, read have... too. No, these what are you... yours. Oh, is that mine? Oh, I must have got another one in the interim. Yeah, Dr. Kip. <laughs> Dr. Kip. There you go. Read we that, have Paul. several. Hold on. All right, oh, wow. So Dr. Kip says, uh, the Oilers suck, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, yeah, there are. They're a couple points out of first place in the league, so that's really, really sucking. That's too bad. <laughs> too bad. Uh, Vandy, and we love you, Dr. Kip. Thank you for the donation. Oh, Appreciate Vandy. You. Hi. Vandy with a very generous donation. Now, these Aww. were probably, you know, were started as American dollars that got converted. Uh, Vandy wrote, hi. So that was like 55 cents American. Vandy writes, that's right. that is, that's a deep cut. Like, if you know Vandy, Vandy is usually one of the first people to comment on a video and always rates high. So I mm. love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Gnostic Informant writes, I vote for the coffee table team because I need them for books. Well, I don't know if you need them for books. I think you can read books without a coffee table. Oh, my God. Did we do also have a no stack bound. of books on our coffee table. I can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Luke a uh, very generous donation. Thank you. Wrote Matt and Paul, your content was very challenging when I was Church of Christ preacher, so I really appreciate your work. I felt comfortable coming out as an agnostic atheist a year ago, largely due to your educational material. So all four of you have my deepest gratitude. Here's to the anti-coffee table fund. Will we put it in the there coffee table fund? I know that did. one was for you. That one says topologia. You must have oh, found an aggregate. I oh, I, oh, this is an ag oh, this is yeah, the team, team one is yeah, aggregating. Yeah, you're at the team level. Yeah. Well, that's actually better. That's perfect. that's actually that is better. Everyone. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Sweet. Thanks, Excellent. Luke. Nice. That is like that's amazing to hear. And yeah, yeah. Keep it rolling, everyone. That's that and also, so Luke. Generous. Yeah. Thank you. That means a lot to us. We appreciate. Thank you. Thank you for paying that gratitude forward. I appreciate it. All right. So Answers in Genesis streaming service, which I am the only person in Canada subscribed to, probably. I don't know. They have a movie review show because, of I course, so they do because they just have to fill hours. And uh -huh. so React content's popular, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Except <laughs> they review movies like, you know, hey, Let's get on and review Endgame, which is like, what? Wait, does it has the, not the whole world already seen Endgame right. from several years ago? That doesn't matter. We're we're on it. Finger <laughs> right on the on pulse. It. 
finger on the pulse. Yeah. The so very weak um, pulse. <laughs> so I thought I would gather these atheist Avengers here. Let's go. And we I can want them to react to the original cool. Ghostbusters in preparation for the new Ghostbusters. Um, because I can just imagine what kind of satanic stuff they oh they'd boy go off mm. on. That. They probably find the new one equally satanic. Oh, probably. I mean, yoga and the new one has satanic, probably like so. women in it and stuff. And they don't like mm. that. You <laughs> <laughs> women, they're not a fan. So we're gonna. If, if anyone ever anyone wants on on the panel, just say pause. I will pause it, and we can talk about what they're saying. Uh, this was an hour long review, well, fifteen minute review, but they because they're a streaming service, not like YouTube or whatever, they're unregulated. So part of what they do is they just play like five minutes of the movie at a time in their review as well, because no one no one can stop them because there's no copyright checks on a private streaming service. So I had to trim all that out. So uh, just in the audience, it's going to seem abrupt in a few places where. For YouTube copy, YouTube copyright, but we all remember Endgame. It was a movie that we all remember, <laughs> so we don't need this. We don't need the context. All right, here we go. I'm not ready. This isn't your typical movie review show. We're not saying that you should or shouldn't watch the films we review, and we're not detailing all the objectionable material in them. Several websites do that already. <laughs> also, the brief clips used for humor, we're not endorsing those shows or actors either. Instead, we're examining the ideas and philosophies found in these movies from a biblical perspective to help you shift your thinking to align with the Bible. Tilt shift. This is a real talk about real fantasy. ideas. Super. <laughs> I don't I, 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 that's confusing to me. It's a science fiction fantasy superhero movie. How do you, how does one align that with the Bible? Yeah. <laughs> it, when, when Jesus came down and sacrificed himself to himself, um, did that also save Thanos? That's right. a good question. It's a really good question. Maybe they'll get into that. <laughs> well, it's the sons of Adam, I think, only. So I don't. I will say they are that smart. I don't think. That, I don't think that they would have even realized that's a problem. My guess is here's my prediction that they're going to be like someone. Someone was either gay or a, or a woman and did something that they thought that gay people or women shouldn't do, and th you should not like it but you can probably still watch the movie, but you should know that that's not the way reality is, even though it's a fucking fantasy movie. That's my See, guess. Yeah. I that's my prediction. Little, I thought their little intro was really bad, but I will say, mildly begrudgingly, I think Tilt Shift is a brilliant name <laughs> for what they say they're going to do. <laughs> Explain. Explain, please, because I don't know if everyone knows what a tilt shift is. So so Tilt Shift is a, is a camera style that got insanely insanely popular because it gives you like the the mr rogers neighborhood kind of um view where everything looks like it's a miniature even though it's real it's a it, it, i don't know enough about the camera thing to actually address that but if what they're trying to do is shift your perspective tilt your perspective so that you can get back on a biblical um foundation well that's i think that's one of the best names they could have come up with at their introduction to this was crap, but the name's good. <laughs> it's not I half agree. clever. I'll it's an ironic that. name. Yeah. Oh, uh, we we have we have some more. We have Theocritic to the Apologia team. Hundred dollars. Thank you, Theocritic. Much <gasps> oh, love wow. to you both. Appreciate you. Uh, Melly, a forty dollar donation. Hashtag team. Don't make Shannon trip over coffee mugs on the floor. Yay! <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> And uh, Tommy Stewart with a $13 donation. Uh, though I feel strong connection to Paul as a fellow cancer survivor, coincidentally how I became an atheist, I got to go team coffee table with Shannon here. Nice. I'm enjoying so. how much I'm winning. <laughs> <laughs> that makes right. me happy. Hi, and welcome to Tilt Shift. I'm Tim. I'm Brian. And today we're going to be checking out one of the most popular movies in history. 
and that is the Avengers Endgame, yeah. which is rated PG-13 for sequences of sci-fi violence and action and some language. And it is the culmination well, What they mean is some bad language. Okay? Some because bad most language. movies have some language. A little bit, right? Besides yeah. A Quiet Place, right? right. A little there. But, it's not uh, relatable to him trying to be with his Nintendo shirt. I love how yeah. they're both listed as author and speaker. <laughs> They wrote a book and they they wrote things down and sometimes they say stuff. I mean, <laughs> for I'm gonna I'm just gonna name drop through through all this. Forrest was over last night as well, and Forrest uh -huh. was talking about this video that he did with a creationist who wrote a book and filmed a movie about evolution and didn't even know what an allele was or any of the basics about the mechanisms behind evolution Check and so out. when somebody lists themselves as author and speaker like i want these guys to be listed as like <laughs> author and filmmaker um because i think they're kind of making some film now mm. a speaker literally if you just gather enough people together i suppose you're a speaker right speaker's well, the thing i turn down when i don't want to annoy everybody else in the room do you know what tim <laughs> chafee wrote do you know what tim chafee no, wrote no no what Tim Chafee wrote a heresy. He wrote Noah's Ark fan fiction. Oh, oh, but that's not what he's known for. But yes, he did. But do that, that is his author credit. I don't know if sure. I heard of that, but now I'm so curious. He like they sell it at AIG, and he basically wrote like volumes of like a fictional story that is like all about like Noah and what his life was like. I thought that was the Bible. No, no, no. The Bible didn't extrapolate enough. We we needed we needed some like character building. We needed <laughs> we needed a lot of background filled in. He just made a fictional world where he took Noah from the Bible and just expounded upon it with his own musings about who Noah was and what his family was like and what they did and where they worked and what they ate for breakfast and wrote it all down in a fan fiction novel. This is um, serious. It feels should... heretical. That is. That's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody should tell him what Revelation, Revelation 22, 18 says. Because, you know. Well, it's... Tim is best known as the author of, he wrote every sign in the Ark Encounter. He's the sign writer. Oh, that my gosh. Job. I took pictures of those specifically because they were bad. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. But there is a sign. It's funny, Matt, that you brought that up because there is literally a sign. Uh, you would have seen it. The um, the uh, how do the, they acknowledge that they are going beyond the Bible and that they're not they they say they're not breaking that verse because they're say they're well, this is artistic license we're not adding to the Bible, which is like a distinction without a difference as far as yeah. I can tell. <laughs> That's artistic wild. license isn't adding to the Bible. No, how could it be? Yeah, and they get kids to read them in uh in homeschooling mm. as, as I mean, literature. It's, it's like. It's the way the Bible ends. Now, I think there's a really good case that Revelation probably shouldn't have been included. It's like the ravings of a madman, and there were many discussions about whether or not it should be included at all. But Revelation 22, 18 is, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And so if you're writing fanfic that adds to the story of Noah, um, I guess you should be ready for fucking locusts. <laughs> you could even go to Deuteronomy. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the com commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Deuteronomy 4.2. You know what's funny is, um, and, and I, I will, because we're tr trying to be uh, decent people raising money for MS, <laughs> I will I'll try and avoid some, some F-bombs, but... Oh, you can swear. Fuck it. It's, <laughs> it's funny that Two of us have quoted from the Bible in response to the opening remarks <laughs> about the answers yeah. in Genesis thing. Let's see how long they go before they reference the Bible. Yeah, that's a good question. Good question. This is the true tilt shift. <laughs> Shannon and Matt are going to teach you more about the Bible than these authors and speakers from Answers in Genesis. Oh, you guys are the best. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up crying. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Frankie, to Team Apologia, thank you for that. $35. Paul, Shannon, Arden, Matt, you guys have been a huge part of my deconversion from Christianity. Thank you for everything you do. I've been feeling a bit disoriented and nihilistic. Since I no longer believe, I have divine purpose. I've been feeling like I need to act as if things mattered, even if they don't, even if I don't feel like they do. 
and hopefully my perspective will change. This is one of few small steps toward that for me. Hope you guys got a glimpse of the eclipse today. Well, thank you so much, Frankie. Thank and I hope you, you're, Frankie. I hope this is a small step on your journey towards not feeling nihilistic. That's amazing. We, and for Gnostic Informant, I use the King James because I don't want to come up with any copyright issues. So mm -hmm. I've got an NIV sitting right next to me, but who knows if they'll allow an atheist to quote from it. <laughs> and Rick Hahn, like thank, you. thank you for the $50. Good luck, he says. And thank, thank you. you. Appreciate you, Rick. That's Appreciate awesome. Yes. It is the culmination of 23 different movies. Yeah, so and... all of these Marvel heroes, the Hulk, and like three Iron Mans, Thor, and three Captain Americas, Iron... three oh. Thors. Okay, this is together. where it gets used. Yeah. What three... And... What three? So the three Iron Mans I can get, because maybe he's talking about like... Well, well Pepper was in an Iron Man costume. Pepper, as, yeah. yeah. As yeah. Was, I think he just Jesus means... Character. They said 23 movies. I think he just means Iron Man 1, Iron Man 2, and oh, Iron Man Oh, that makes more movies. sense. That makes more sense. That makes so many more, so much more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there were three Iron Man three movies, three America. Thor movies. Were there three? Yeah. There was original Winter Soldier, and Civil that's War. Captain America. Civil War. Yeah. Okay. All right. That makes way more sense because yeah. I was like, I can get to the three Iron Man, but I can't get to the three Captain Americas. There's only two. Matt's okay. here to Captain America, the, the first Avenger. Captain yep. America, yeah, the Winter Soldier, and Captain America: Civil War, yes, which most people view as an Avengers movie, but it's Captain America. It is a Captain America movie. Gotcha. Uh, okay. Matt is, Matt Matt is so the creationist whisperer here. That's excellent. <laughs> yeah. Can, uh, and a reminder to everyone: like this, out of uh, nonsense into sense. For rather, than, rather than super chats for tonight, please donate to the MS Walk. That's what we're here for tonight. It's not perfect by any stretch, but it is so well done. I mean, really, storytelling overall to pull all that and pull it all together, it, it's a masterpiece in that sense. And so I enjoyed it uh, big time for that reason. Yeah, when I, when I think about it as a, as a writer, you know, I've written a, a, a trilogy about Noah's life and trying to think of all these storylines. Thank yeah. you. To... <laughs> there, there it is. He wrote the trilogy. Wrote the trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> it, trilogy. It's funny that the three books are Man of God, Man of Resolve, and Man of Destiny. And not where's the fourth one, which is man of alcoholism. That's right. <laughs> man of nudity. Man, man of shame. Yeah. Man of cursing your son to be a slave of the other sons. Yeah. Yep. You can't uh, work. Curse of Ham needs to be the yeah another follow. -up. Maybe that's the destiny part. He he worked mm. he worked out that destiny. And really what's well. absolutely batshit crazy too is like if you read the story of Noah and the Ark in the Bible, one there's two versions, but those two versions take up literal pages pages in the bible and he managed to pull that out into three volumes which means he, he added he had to add so much for that to even be a plausible endeavor <laughs> i love it i want to say nothing redone as like an anime <laughs> right? that's all out of his head larry fishman for 50 dollars Hashtag buy your wife a god buy your wife a damn hot coffee table. You didn't you didn't blaspheme in there. I added that in. So <laughs> thank you, Larry. Appreciate you. Uh, although that went and ended up going on to my team. So uh, you know it's a mixed message. Mixed message at best. I'll allow it. I feel but I feel good about <laughs> it because they wanted you to see it directly. <laughs> uh Claire for $30. You deserve a coffee table. Show Paul who's boss. All right. Well, I hope the fine people at the MS Walk are going to be very confused by these incoming donations. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait because they announce when you go to the walk and then you get to go up on stage if you have the top team. I can't wait. I've, I've actually done it before because I was the first before. And I, was, and I said, I would like to thank the atheist community. And I just was... <laughs> <laughs> But I didn't care nice. because you guys are the ones who did it for me before when I did Aww. I did a fundraiser with Dr. Josh in the past. And I'll do it again. Cute. Weave all these storylines together. That's just three books. Yeah. And, and trying to keep those all straight and all the things I had to do. And to do t so many different characters, so many different storylines. That's impressive. Yeah. It really is impressive. Um, and throughout the series, of course, the special effects are getting better and better because oh, yeah. it's been taking place over like a 12 year or 13 year time Long period. Time. Of course, these guys think that their 66 books are really well harmonized as well. So, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's faint praise from these guys. To be fair, though, when Shannon was pointing out that the Noah story is only a couple pages, I mean, it's, it's like 
Genesis 7, 8, and 9 or something like that. But Noah lived for 850 years. We got to tell something about all those other years. So, of course, so. you should do some fan fiction. Uh, it, it distracts from the actual absurdity that somebody lived to be 850 years old, that they started building a boat when they were 500. <laughs> I hope I'm doing that when I'm 500. <laughs> Just building a boat. I hope I'm not building boats because everybody's about to die when I'm 500. <laughs> that's, that's what I hope. 500 would be so long. And um, of course, it kept ramping up more and more and more drama. And the seventh, the, the seventh, the, the one before this, right. which would have been the third Avengers film, um, Infinity War, ended on a note that. If you went to it in the theater, which I didn't do, yeah. um, most people were shocked by it. I don't know why they would have been shocked. That's a virtue signal, by the way. Why? <laughs> his, to his audience, that would be a virtue signal. Oh, that he didn't I, go in the oh, theater? I didn't, I didn't go see that in the theater. That's, yeah. But he did see it, oh, so what's the yeah. difference? Yeah. Is yeah. it the amount of money that he would have yeah, given? Yeah, because you, the perception is you're not giving them But that means know, the that he subscribed directly. to Disney+. Plus. That would be how he saw it, unless he stole it, and That's he wouldn't true, want to and steal very it. Anti which Disney means Plus. that over time, you're giving Disney money every single month, which cumulatively would be less than one individual mute movie ticket. So I'm not even sure why that's a virtue signal, and it's saying that I'm so invested in wanting to watch these things that I'm willing to give money to this company so that I can perceive, view consume the things that they produce and they certainly aren't on board with disney i'm assuming based on how disney is no made. they're in fact they view disney plus as their competitor although i'm sure disney plus is unaware, that's unaware cute. that they exist that's real cute <laughs> you know, that's adorable I, i'm okay. pretty sure g-man views himself as my competitor yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> I was out with my cousins and I saw that Paul was streaming and I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Is it 2015 again? I'm sorry. Did I, did I hit my head? <laughs> uh, we, hold on. I got to get back to the. Back to this. Much love to you all from Matthew hey. Tate. Uh, I must ask since Paul is opposed to coffee tables, what about side tables? No, same thing. Perhaps you could compromise <laughs> so Shannon isn't dripping over mugs. If you have side tables already, then what the fuck, Paul? Well, you know, uh, it's all clutter magnets. Paul. I'm See? enjoying that your donations are just encouraging <laughs> me. <Drew. laughs> Paul would Drew hate our living room right now, and it's... Oh, I'm sure of that. Paul would hate our I entire hate... house. Yeah, no, no, I our house too, would drive him nuts right now. Well we just clutter. It. Even, like, the background you can see. I would want to organize it. Would you let me like just go through your house and put yes. the piles? Yes, me. I would and give you money. Are you not flying down today? <laughs> oh, I would do that and be so excited. Sometimes for fun, if I have like a weekend free, I will just take everything out of like a closet and just reorganize it and donate a bunch of stuff. Can and we then switch this? How much do you want? To, to How would you want? I down pay. to Austin to <laughs> that's our right. freaking house. Yeah. <laughs> I need to come to Austin soon. I miss you guys. We didn't know. Again. I've got oodles and gobs of reptiles and rodents and all I kinds know. of stuff. I want to hang out with the snicks. Andres Andre Placaris, I think. I'm not sure. I don't have much and struggle with my own health issues. Here's a small donation. Oh, Andres, thank we, you. We appreciate you. And please, please don't yeah, no, to don't feel obligated to to donate. Please just enjoy the show if if need be. But we definitely appreciate. Uh, Patrick Kelly. For fifty dollars, writes three volumes. How many locusts is that? <laughs> I feel like Noah was pre-locust. Locusts were Moses, right? Like well, they, God they was, existed. God was sending plagues. Well, I mean, yes. Well, no, because they all died. No, because uh, depends on which volume. Because there was like what two locusts on the boat. No, because they didn't have the they don't have the nostrils. For, okay, for well air. then they all died. Or they didn't exist yet. Those no, are the only two no, they uh, they floated on leaves and stuff because that's they what answers the Genesis answers. Yeah, no, you're books right. Say. I'm an idiot. Oh, that that's was right. dumb. It was dumb of me to suggest that while the kangaroos were getting blasted by volcanoes to Australia, that's the right. locusts were floating around. Now on you're leaves. see. Now you're getting it. Yeah, no, you're right. I'm the moron. <laughs> mm -hmm. Problem uh, with me. Claude Simeon, uh, thirty-four dollar donation. Go heathen, which is just the general. I mean, all of us are heathens in our own way. So, 
go heathen. <laughs> so, so, so that's a general cheer. Perfect. Appreciate it. Appreciate all the support awesome. so far. Did know there has to be another movie? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that it was a good twist. Sorry, what was that hard? No, I was just think it looked like we cracked four thousand on the mm. on the list, right? That's pretty exciting. But I interrupted. Oh you. yeah, we did absolutely. So, yeah, did we cracked four thousand. Yeah. <gasps> We're probably gonna get five thousand by the end of the night. Easy. Oh Come on, you guys. Listening. I'm gonna have to change my goal again. No. I Yay. thought I would never get a thousand. Oh, this is so exciting. Okay, sorry. I'm fine. Yay. Let's do this. People want to talk. Watch us talk about Endgame. I'm being selfish. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm really excited. Yeah, well, as the, opposed to Last Jedi. But yeah. Anyway. Uh, so there's what they call the snap, where yeah. Thanos gets all the Infinity Stones, snaps, and half. Half the inhabitants of the universe. So it's like it seems like he, he wins. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so you Spider-Man gone, and a yeah. bunch of characters that that people like gone, and you can't believe that's just happened. Right. So Endgame picks up there, and so in the first twenty minutes they're angry, they they lost. That's right. And they find Thanos in a weakened state. That's where Tim really robbed himself because that, if you're in a theater filled with Marvel fans, oh yeah, while each of those characters is dusting. Even though in the back of your head you know they'll come back next movie, like that was that was some deeply emotional, generational hurt that they put on us there. So yeah. Tim missed out. I know. There's nothing like being there opening night. Like I can't wait for Deadpool to come out for that reason. Mm. Like, I like the the only other experience that was similar to Endgame was a uh, Spider Man No Way Home. Seeing Spider-Man No Way Home on opening night. Like, because there's nothing like seeing it in a live theater on opening night with oh, for fans. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big time. There, there, there's no comparison. Because you're sharing an experience with people who it matters to. Like, because people may not know, but every person on this stream is a Marvel fan. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All four of us have had conversations, many conversations about our fandom of Marvel and sci-fi in general, like we're all sci-fi fans. So yeah, these guys are touching on a thing that I love. Like, I mean, I love society and the human race and they fuck with that all the time. And that pisses me <laughs> off, but this also <laughs> pisses me off on a whole nother level. Because not like you're messing with something that I love as an escape too, mm -hmm. right? Like you're fucking with something that I enjoy as like escapism from your bullshit. Now you're ruining that for me too. Like fuck you. Stop it. Stop yeah. touching everything. Stop touching things. <laughs> Leave your fucking fingers to yourselves. Not everything needs to belong yeah. to you. What did he do? He took those he infinity destroyed. stones and used them to destroy the infinity, the infinity stones. stones. So they're gone. So nobody can fix it, right? You can't undo the snap. It's done. right. And it it almost killed him. Some of the Avengers show up, the ones, some, a few that are left, and they kill Thanos. Kill Thanos. 20 minutes in, movie done. Thanos, <laughs> vengeance, right? But the problem is they've got no more hope. They've, right. There's no way to fix the problem. They can't bring the people back. And so now they feel broken. They feel hopeless. And, and the kind movie of makes you, the make, movie makes you feel that. because the, It really the, does. The first mm -hmm. 20 minutes are actually pretty slow. The right. next, after that, after they kill Thanos, it's still really slow and gritty a little bit. Yeah. But as soon as they kill Thanos, then they cut to a thing that is... Five years later. Let's take a look at what the first thing they show us after that. After five years. There it is, five years later. Look at that. Aww. Should have been seven. And it's foggy too. It should have so been I, seven. Uh, yeah, why? I don't I don't understand that. <laughs> because Can explain that to me? Everything biblical has to be seven. Not five. This is a movie Five's not a magic number not in a, Kabbalah. It's not a, it's not a special Bible This is Bible a movie number. about an alien from space <laughs> eliminated <laughs> half of the universe's population. Part of being an evangelical Christian is having favorite numbers. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. I remember to this day a sermon that a pastor gave about the significance of the Trinity in, in three, and it was a huge impact because it's like, if you look at your finger, there are three segments. And then you could also consider your arm as three segments, the hand, the forearm, and the upper arm. Then you could view the your body as your head, your torso, and, and this. And there's three things on a stool. And there's three of this. There's three layers to your skin. There's three parts to your eye. There's three of this and three of this. There's and three a whole many this. more there's... than three parts to your eye. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but you can, because you can divide things. Up. There's a beginning, a middle, an end. There's there's youth and, and middle age and old age. And it, and it was it was just this absolute 
like if you didn't think about it you're like holy crap three is so important and then i watched somebody do something similar with four and five i've got yeah. five fingers on this hand and i've got five fingers on this hand and you know once you dig into it but it's funny that he's like oh it should have been seven because what do you think i think he's making a joke about the significance of seven and why it should have been in there i don't think he's serious yeah i know wouldn't they dislike numerology one would think because i feel like numerology <laughs> not biblical numerology no, not, not biblical. oh i'm sorry not <laughs> not their brand of numerology I forgot. I'm sorry. I forgot that secular Earth people Earth just have apply. Secular people just have six, 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 and sixty nine. Those are the only two numbers that secular people 42. have. No, oh, forty two. Not that's, that's, that's right. We got 42. and four twenty. <laughs> that's true. That's <laughs> just forty two with a got zero. That. Everyone's got. Everyone's got their favorite numbers. Who's got I your guess. towel? Yeah. Grab your towel. Perfect. Speaking of four twenty. <laughs> that's what we need for this stream i'm gonna pet that dog in a minute <laughs> i went on a date the other day but i'm seeing them again tomorrow so i knew they were gonna do it's this. great you did the hardest part you took the jump you didn't know where you were gonna come down and that's it that's those little brave baby steps we gotta take and you guys will What's notice as you watch the clip, he's talking about the man went on a date with another man. Right. Oh, that's and, a and... <laughs> Stop. <laughs> this, this movie is like three hours long. Uh... <laughs> Five years later, and the first thing we talk about is a couple of guys having sex. They didn't even have, they just went on a date. You don't know that they yeah. didn't have sex. They're gay. They must have they had did. sex. Every gay person has sex on their first date. Trust oh, me, I'm gay, okay. homie. I know. Okay, I forgot. I'm so sorry. The, the full I clip talks about how they just cried so throughout the hard. Date. <laughs> That's. You know what's wild is that I. It didn't even register to me that this was a thing that happened in the movie because it's just a normal person talking about normal yeah. stuff that normal yeah. people do. It's so innocuous. Like I wouldn't even hone in on it at all. I didn't notice until there were complaints. Like I didn't even notice the language. Right. I just it was just somebody went on a date and this happened. And I didn't even the pronouns didn't even register in my head. It was just I was connecting with someone who was going through right. an emotional thing. And yet <laughs> these guys are absolutely full. Did he say that he went on a date with a man? Yeah, and it's like it's such a throwaway. Like instantaneous throwaway thing. Like the only point of this, like from like a plot progression standpoint is that this is showing you where steve is where steve rogers is captain america is at this point in his life and what he's doing and like who he is as a person after the snap and how he's coping and how he's applying himself because he was a hero who always wanted to help people and doesn't have a villain but still wants to help people so is choosing to do so the best way he knows how like that is the point of this the fact that it happens to be that he's in a group therapy session and I'm sure other people said things too. I don't remember, but I'm certain other people probably said things too in the group therapy session because there were a group therapy session. They focus in on the one person who's disparate from their ideology and make a point of singling them out. As though all that, the like, it, and it could have just snap. passed. It was a homosexual. Of course they was a queer and the director of the movie. And the director of the oh, movie. Oh, was that the director? <laughs> yeah. No shit. One I didn't even them. know that. It's one, it's one of the Russos, yep. No shit. <sighs> cool. That's, um, a, that's, that's just a cool little point of fact that now I have in my <laughs> head that I didn't have before. I think Matt not noticing was what AIG has a problem with. They have yeah. more of a problem <laughs> that Matt didn't notice than that it was in there. <laughs> Why? Yeah. That means that that means they're losing. They're losing the culture war. Oh, oh, because that means that people are just. If you're not at least, accepted. if you're not at least like, maybe you don't have to be outraged anymore, but you should at least be feel weird for a second or two, right? It's like what they want. I can't wait for them to do their their special episode where they're upset that I didn't notice that Barbie was about feminism. <laughs> Did they do Barbie? I don't watch. I they haven't. So. No, they haven't done Barbie yet. I, Shannon, I I'm will sure. tell you when they do Barbie. But... They'll get to Please it in do. like four or five years, right? That's about right. Yeah, time. <laughs> <laughs> that's about the time. Span. Seven years. <laughs> Sometime in twenty thirty six, they will focus on Barbie. 
and that was Captain America's response, and that is, oh, that's great, that's awesome. And he totally doesn't respond to it at all. He just accept, accepts what the man says as natural, as normative, as good. Yeah. But, but understand who Captain America Captain America should have just punched him in the nose, apparently. It is what, is what <laughs> Brian wanted him to do. <laughs> like, you a <were> queer? <laughs> Make sure you punch Nazis and queers. <laughs> <laughs> don't go being sad in this group if you're one of them queers what the fuck what you, it's a group oh therapy God. session mm. Jesus but basically Christ. what they said is I'm just like Captain America because I just treated like it was normal too exactly yep. it, it floated right past me the first time like I've watched the movie a couple of times and it just floated right past me like I just remember when um, Falcon came in after and talked to him and they were mm. stacking chairs together and like because that conversation was about the progression it just floated right past me. Didn't even register that it happened until they pointed it out. America is in this course yeah. of the films. He's the guy who He's the started out really like in the 1940s, uh, 30s. Is that his story? Or was he back, back in the 20s? He's, a while He's back. A while back. Yeah. And um, so he's the... Well, back with the, the Nazis, so... Yes. The editors put notes on the screen when the, when the guys are wrong. About <laughs> when stuff. they don't yeah. know history, Yeah. <laughs> So he's the ver so answers in Genic Genesis theoretically has someone on staff who knows how to fact check something. <laughs> oh, That's oh, 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 throw in Jade, find out who that person is and why they're not involved in other things. Exactly, like, <laughs> just on the movie show. That's, yeah. Virtuous character, he's the moral character, the moral compass, the, if you will. Yeah, he's the moral compass of that whole group. And when the guy talked about going on a, a date with another man, he said, that's great. Those are those brave baby steps. How many times do we hear yeah. in our culture that it's brave for, for people to yeah, come out? Yeah, but Cap out. wasn't and saying he was brave to date a dude. Cap no. was saying he was brave <laughs> to try to build a normal life again. Uh, <laughs> to make connections with humans when he was scared. I'm not reading this guy's Noah's book. It must be <laughs> That's because you're a bigot against Christians. <laughs> That's why. We have an anonymous donor for 1360. Says, go, Paul. I can get behind this message. Go, Does Paul. That's $340. $340. Wow. <laughs> Gerald Norris, thanks for what y'all do. Thank you, Gerald. That is greatly appreciated. The MS Walk thanks you as well. Uh, and Gnostic Informant. Oh, going for the double dip. Just one small double dip. Thank you, Gnostic Informant. Uh, Dilla Hunty Thanos should be eternally immortalized for the debate with Jordan Peterson when JVP said that psychedelics demonstrate the supernatural because some people quit smoking. After. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> people will be watching that 100 years from now. Also, my cousin with MS will be happy to see the stream. Oh, well, hello to your cousin, on. Neil. Uh, I, I honestly hope that people in 100 years have no idea who Jordan Peterson is. Cheers I hope people in 100 years yeah. don't know who any of us are because yep. that means the odds are that maybe we've gotten past this crap. Uh, CPO, fast forward. $10 on the Shannon Q team. Thank you. I spent 30 years in the Royal Canadian Navy. Thank you for your service. And have enough have enough tales for three volumes. Maybe <laughs> May 8th. You should cover me and go team Paul. The trouble is you have true stories that are true and based in true things. Uh, whereas the others are fan fiction. So they're not, yeah, they're not as interested. Uh, H Walker, $15 for the Apologia team to convey one's mood in 17 syllables is very difficult. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Yeah. That's Sorry. cute. Yeah. Funny. Uh, yeah, and I think that's that's the new one since last time. Thank you, everyone. Thank You're being you. so generous. So as you can tell, we are not reading the super chats today, but what we are reading is uh, the MS Walk donations. You can find link to Team Polygia in the description. Uh, Shannon, you should maybe in the chat throw your description. Your, your yeah, link mine's on my channel, well. but so I guess and you might have a choice. you might be watching on Team <laughs> Shannon on because we're simulcasting on Shannon Q and Polygia channels, so. You can Who go to Apologies link and then navigate to the team and then find mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You can do that. You can do that. All right. And yet, yeah. if what's been going on for the last 10 years, you'll get a call from the president. You know, if you're an athlete who comes out, you'll get, I mean, all these things where you're praised. 
I just love the delusional world they live in where if you're gay, like you get a personal handshake from the president, like <laughs> the first lady delivers your child, you know. I know. And then everybody just rolls out a red carpet for you and was like, would you're you like so the best brave. of everything we have to offer in society? Yeah. <laughs> That's a hundred percent what happens. Mm. That it's wild to me. Like the disparate understanding of what it just goes to show that they perceive when you, when you've had nothing but privilege you perceive the loss of that privilege as discrimination yeah you perceive anybody else having the opportunities that you avail of and entirely take for granted and see as the default for someone like you anybody having equal footing is just that's an advantage in your eyes because you don't even know what the fuck advantage means because it's the default for you i think it's even worse than that too because it's like it's not even just that they lost privilege it's that like they lost the right to oppress other people and True. that it's not even like they lost anything other than the right to like or like being the normal one in society or whatever Mm -hmm. I don't think they, I don't even know if they necessarily lost privilege, but just the fact that they are able to openly be homophobic without being like, you know, having social repercussions right. mm -hmm. is, is so, is enough to think like, oh, wow, these people just get everything now. Like, it's just an insane disparity. Uh <laughs> Is it wrong to ship these two? Because if you go back, they're sitting in the exact same way with their legs in the same position. They're making the same motion with their arms. Oh. I think they doth protest too much. They're enjoying the same types of things. They're like, they're sharing an experience. I don't know. It's like a date. They went to the movies. See, they got popcorn. Yeah. No, no, no. They made it very clear that they did not go to the movies. <laughs> right. They right. brought the movies to them because yeah, they were ready to be seen together in public. They watched this in the intimacy of their own homes. Mm. They wouldn't do it publicly. Or the studio that they put together for this. <laughs> they did Balls do a approval. decent job right. of like They're trying to be like we do we do science fiction. I see a ninja turtle and a Yoda. Yep. And some sort of pink unicorn next to Darth Vader. Oh, yeah. There's several pop cap figures, but I'm not sure what they are. It's difficult for me to tell from here. And then there's movie yeah. posters in the bathroom background. I think one of them is Star Wars. The Star Wars. I think there's a Godzilla. I see Denzel Washington's there. face. So I'm going to say maybe remember the Titans. Wouldn't mm. all these count as idols? You... Lord of the Rings. Hmm. Potentially. Well, it it depends on how seriously you take things. Which is an idol um i guess they would be yeah that's right they're not graven images they're not like you know, representing gods but yeah they absolutely would be idols yeah. anything anything you worship above anything you put above god actually I'm, I'm just saying if they've got a bunch of like secular movie posters yeah. and a yoda and all this where's jesus i don't see jesus or <laughs> right. like passion of the christ posters or anything exactly. like that Good point. Good point. Yeah, because they have lots to choose from. But then they would be promoting competition potentially. To be mm. fair, I can't see all the posters because it's no, dark it's a little dark. dark yeah. But I know one is for sure of Lord of the Rings. I see Denzel Washington. It looks like Remember the Titans. There's a Star Wars one. Back to the Future is the far left. The only one I can't yep. figure out is the middle one, the one that's right behind Tim's left shoulder. I think that's Godzilla. I think that's Godzilla. Is that Godzilla? Yeah. The rest of them I think are I think I got. That one I can't be just like a blue blob to me. I don't. I don't. Just know based on, because I watch this show more than you guys. Because why? <laughs> why wouldn't I have? Yeah, because you are. You are as a person. Mm -hmm. Really take bravery in our culture <laughs> to do that. And really, what I want to point out, and I know we've talked about this with that clip, is how normal it's just presented. Mm -hmm. It's presented as something normative, and thus, if it's normal, it's just right and good. And that whole idea that a, a homosexual relationship being normative is, and good is anti-biblical, and actually, it's really harmful to human flourishing, the humans and us people, and it's unbiblical, but they're <laughs> presenting it as good. And it's horrible for human flourishing for gay people to be presented as normal. <clears throat> yeah, not not even celebrated, just like mm -mm. just normal, just normal in society. Like, uh, right. I, uh, yeah, because it's not like Steve set off a confetti cannon when Buddy was like, "I went on a date with a guy." He wasn't like, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> "Let's go, gay." <laughs> 
will be gay. That's, let's destroy society. <laughs> I got my tidy whities with my cap like shield. A human and a, does yeah, yeah, to yeah. somebody having an experience in their life that they wanted support for. And that, that's what they fucking hate. I need oh. to hear him like attempt to substantiate the claim that it's bad for human flourishing. Like, oh, please. it's because it's because homosexuals it's don't reproduce. But the flip side is you're never going to get slapped with a paternity suit. <laughs> <laughs> and also, homosexuals are a subset of the population, so people will still reproduce. It's almost like tacitly saying. If you had the choice to be gay and not straight, all of us would choose to be gay instead of straight, and then no one would reproduce. <laughs> right. Which is insane. It's like, true, right? Yeah, it's oh. almost like saying, well, I'm gay and you're gay, and we would be gay if we could be <laughs> gay, but we can't. And therefore, <laughs> now we can have babies <laughs> with women because if we had a choice, we wouldn't. Am I right? That's what they're fucking saying. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy i don't know why these guys are choosing to pretend like they're straight <laughs> <laughs> we are putting a many a tick in the ship these guys call them <laughs> that is happening they, rapidly they have self-control because the answers are in genesis that's the way that, the way that nice. goes good tie-in this thing's an um, hour long, and we haven't even got past cat uh, it's, congratulating cut, someone for having gay sex. Yeah, the cut down's only twenty seven. So anyway, um, he didn't even know they went on a date. It was just like I had coffee with the guy. I would and then love I was to sad. I would then love to know if Brian or Tim laughed or how they felt when the when the America's ass joke came yes. in, in this movie. Like this very movie. Ooh. Yep, has also, Captain America admiring his own ass. How gay can you get? I mean, like, I'm looking at my ass going, that's a great ass, right? That's that's America's ass. But I want to see if these guys actually address the important thing from this, which is uh, that they're talking about uh, going out on a date and when each of them cried. So the whole mm. thing about this scene is it's mm. been five years and the world is a shambles and we're just looking at a tiny little area on our one tiny little planet and i'm gonna bet they don't mention the crying thing at all not even to say that it's potentially a good thing or that this shows you know maturity and that it's okay for dudes to cry because if right. they think it's not okay for dudes to hang out or go on dates they're probably not that cool with crying oh i bet no yeah, they're probably right that's attached. for sure yeah, Noah didn't cry. He <laughs> just built a boat, yeah. and watched everybody around him drown. <laughs> then got drunk and naked. Yeah. And exposed himself to his As male children. <laughs> they probably, yeah, we're very conflicted with the uh, Russell Crowe Noah. They probably felt different ways about it. If you <laughs> keep hearing that idea again and again and see it like that, yeah. and then the moral Huge compass of this, of this movie... Um, marathon and yeah. this man says no it's good and right good on you and then that idea to the audience is seen as good and right and normative and, and here's here's the other thing for what's the point of that scene it's really it's not if the i knew they didn't idea. know the point of that scene <laughs> <laughs> we spent 20 minutes explaining <laughs> the point of that scene <laughs> let's see if he gets it right with a He's woman, <laughs> would the scene have been kept in the movie? No, there, there's so. no point to it other than push this idea. <laughs> there's absolutely <laughs> no point to talking about the real world experiences and the trauma and how people are coping with five years of losing half of the people in the universe. Right. Why did we even keep that in? That's some woke bullshit right there. Because uh -huh. hmm. if a straight person, like if that, if that, if that character that who is the director, I guess, had said. I went on a date with a woman and all other all other things were kept equal. Yeah. We wouldn't be having this fucking conversation. Yep. We would not be having the conversation and they pro and I don't believe that they don't get it. I believe that they refuse to get it because then they would have to acknowledge that queer people have the same type of fucking feelings. Right. <laughs> they also have emotions. <laughs> yeah. They they have the same type of feelings and orientations I know that towards they know. other people. I know that these guys absolutely know that queer folks have feelings because they're constantly trying to provoke those feelings with their mockery and derision. Mm. 
I would go so far as to say that they are not attempting to provoke queer people's feelings. They are attempting to embolden bigots' feelings. And they are completely disregarding queer, queer people's feelings because they don't matter to them. All right. So we've got a useless scene. <laughs> yeah. Who gives a shit? <laughs> we, just, we just spent like 30 minutes on a useless scene. Yeah. What the, the hell's wrong with us? And nobody cares. Especially if uh, you're gay. Because why would you? Right? You should just be straight and not be sad. Chip Payette. $150 to the Team Shannon Q. Go yeah. Shannon Q and Team Coffee Table. Thank you. Thanks so much. We have uh, anonymous a ten dollar oh. anonymous donation to Shannon Q. Thank you, uh, and another anonymous fifty dollars to my team, Apologia. So nice. there you go. Oh my god! Thank you. you, know that you already five thousand dollars. Paul's link already crossed its thousand dollar mark. Oh, did I? I haven't. Uh, I haven't refreshed mine. Oh, yeah, you're, you're, you're at eleven sixty seven. Did I? Yay! <laughs> I don't think I did. <laughs> You're at Shannon. You're oh my god! Five. You're almost at five, Shannon. No, you're that's the team. That's the whole that's team. The team. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, I, I need to. Uh, that's not I need me. To, one of these. I need to pull up your private link here sometime. But yeah, that's the team. I'll go look. All right. Maybe I'll hit mine too. That's pretty good, considering we haven't even got past the gay sex scene. We have. <laughs> <laughs> gay sex breeze in the box. <laughs> Except wait wait till they hear sex. about the casting. It was like a gay Surfer. conversation where everyone cried. <laughs> did you so casting of Silver Surfer? Did you <gasps> watch Ozark? I, I I watched the first season of Ozark and thought it, I loved it. Was brilliant. I wanted to watch more and I got distracted with twenty other mm. things. I have not but watched she, any of it. But she is the Ruth. I forget the actress's name, but the actress who plays Ruth is yeah. is like Jason Bateman's good, but she is the heart of that show. And so if you can add good acting to a cast, like that's never a mistake. Yeah. And, and the fact that Silver Surfer, there as almost as long as there's been a Silver Surfer, there's been a female version. Yeah. Julia Garner is playing Shalabal. Um, so yeah, the watching people freak out about this is, uh, is, is weird. Yeah. We have to watch Ozark. Do you think that that means Galactus is the villain in Fantastic Four? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think there's any chance that Galactus... Is, actually, in the Fantastic Four movie, I don't think you'll see Galactus till near the end. I think That's it's going to I, I think yeah. it's going to be Shala Ball as a quasi-villain that leads to Galactus. her being the herald of Galactus and justifying it. But... Mm. I, what the hell do I know? Do you think Did Galactus you... is going to interact with the multiverse? Sorry, Paul. Like, and yep. Do you? I do. You, I don't think Fantastic Four can realistically, especially since it's in like the '60s. I think be in six one six. No, I think the Fantastic yeah, Four is can't. coming from something outside of six one six, and Galactus yeah. is eating universes, not galaxies. Right. Yeah. And then maybe that'll interact with the whole multiverse thing, and yep. then. What they they pulled Doctor Strange and I can't remember the name of the character that uh, Charlize Theron was playing. Clea. Yeah, Clea. Thank you. That pulled him in, and I think that that is going to interact at the end. That's what I think. I think it'll be in the the as yet unnamed Avengers movie. Yeah. Yes. They can't, get, well, they can't do the it Kangs. was named and now <laughs> the, the Kangs are done now. <laughs> unnamed right <laughs> anyway back back to these yep. guys because they're not going <laughs> to get guys. to those movies until 2073 no. <laughs> somewhere in the film because it doesn't really show up the rest of the film right it's just right here in an unnecessary scene um well there's other things that are are promoted this one's more of a, a little bit of a political ideology and it's one that is controversial for a lot of people i just want people to see this kind of idea thrown in there and, and we've heard this kind of debate um well, listen to what um tony stark says and mm -hmm. this guy who iron is man. iron man yeah so let's take a look here what i'm all ears and i believe i remember telling oh tony, yes tony tony oh i have and otherwise that what we needed was a pseudo armor around the world remember that whether it impacted our precious freedoms or not. That's what we needed. Well, that didn't work out, did it? I said we'd lose. You said oh, we'll do that together too. And guess what, Cap? We lost. So we needed this armor around the earth, but that would mean people have to give up their precious freedoms. And, yeah. and we've heard that debate in our culture for right. the past several decades, especially since 9 11. 
that you know we need to take certain steps. Yeah, you'll give up some of your freedom. Think about it. you fly a lot more than I do. Oh sure. I mean, I've flown to Israel. You good old but, TSA. <laughs> but yeah, right. it takes yeah. an hour and a half or two hours to get to the plane now. Before. I've flown to Israel and you haven't. Is that just straight up virtue signaling? <laughs> I think I think that's in her staff room. Remember I when think... I went to Israel and you didn't get to go? Yeah, <laughs> it probably that's... is. I I don't know what they're getting at though. I'm confused. That's because that's because you and I are Canadian. I like Americans definitely have a muff freedoms kind of thing going on all the time, but I don't. What? Why are they getting into the TSA? Like that just seems like a really weird direction to go for an example. Yeah, I'm waiting of their to political see objective. if they're going to come down on the side of Team Tony or or cap i think mm. they're on i think i'm going to be disappointed that like me they are on cap steam mm. they're well not so far they're not i feel i think that their team fuck freedom protect everybody whoever our almighty is gets to make decisions for us and mm. we should submit to that kind of authority if they I'll know bet your coffee way. table <laughs> okay. I'll take that. See what happens. Do I just continue to not have just, a coffee table? So <laughs> yeah, I'm thankful people aren't blowing up as many planes. I mean, that kind of thing. And there's a balance in there for sure. Of course. Right? Yeah. And, and so you can understand that ideology and, you know, people had concerns like with the Patriot Act and all sorts. There's all sorts of debates about that that we, we don't really need to get into. It's just understand oh. that the movie is taking a position yeah. and throwing it in there on the lips of a character that a lot of people love. Um, but let's. So to be fair. Both movies were taking both positions. Yes. Mm -hmm. That, that yes. was what I was going to say. I'm like... On, yeah. Go, yeah. Go ahead, no, I just... Yeah, the, the whole point is that they're they're not trying to saddle the movie or, like, the, the company with a position. They're trying to be like, ah, different people have different values about, like, how to best handle freedom and protecting each other and, like, which one of those, you know, there's merits to both sides. Like, they're not actually taking a position. And it's weird to me that that's how they view that when like the whole point of civil, like civil war was that they are, there was disparities in the positions that they hold. Like, yeah, there was two people that you loved and respected and you could understand the justifications for them holding entirely different positions. Right. <laughs> Even though they had the same end goal, you could see <sighs> how they would go different paths to do it back when Marvel actually wrote characters and you wanted to, and you cared about their motivations. Let's not get on our sidetrack <laughs> again. But it is really, so desperate to like point out, like, ah, they've got a political ideology they're pushing on you that they're like, it's not even about forcing that. it in where they're, they were, it's not happening. Like, they were both probably fully... good examples of it, but it's not here, you know? Right. Like, um. they're both fully fleshed out characters, and you understand what their background is and what their motivations are. And you can see how they took a disparate path to wanting the same thing, but thinking they needed to do entirely different and conflicting things in order to achieve that goal and how they were trying to find compromise and come together, even though they cared about each other. Like that, that was the point. I don't know what the fuck these guys are doing, but that was Tim the also, point. Tim also acknowledged that, that he thinks that cap is the, the moral compass of the film. Mm -hmm. And now he's upset that there's uh, the person against him, is saying an opinion he doesn't like. It's like, no, yeah. you should be happy that the person you called the moral compass stuck to his guns. You like should be no villain in the film. It's weird. Yeah. They're still kind of down and out for, for quite a long time in this film right. until uh, it's not big, a big spoiler, a little spoiler, Ant Man. <laughs> until Ant Man shows up. <laughs> little or big. And suddenly both, gives right? them hope. But, them but before that, we're going to actually, this is part of the once they have a. And steals their sandwiches. <laughs> a little bit of hope thor who's let himself go <laughs> he's the one who ends up killing thanos and earlier i think in the a film. lot of people were upset about that like <laughs> they're thor worried about the little spoiler <laughs> and then they're like he's the one that ends up killing thanos <laughs> <laughs> well that was in the first 20 minutes to be fair that was in the first 20 minutes of the movie i'm not worried about spoilers because i've already seen it but it's like how are you going to comment on a little spoiler and then give away a big thing? Because I was literally, I was sitting next to Owen uh, when that happened and Owen hadn't seen uh, uh, Infinity War. Oh, and so mm. I was wanting to see how Endgame was going to hold up for someone who hadn't watched Infinity War. Yeah, yeah. And all of us, like the look on all of our faces when that happened was, 
is significant. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, they're just they, they want to body shame Thor. That's 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 in line with what I. So so far they've been mm -hmm. so far in this thing they've talked about men going on a date and <laughs> Thor's body, and yeah. they don't see the purpose in the first scene, but they felt like they really needed to include Thor's body. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, these guys are so they, gay. They, exactly. They needed a <laughs> no reason. No one wants to, to have fuck Thor anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Why did they stop making Thor fuckable? Oh. Have you noticed that neither of us wanted to fuck Thor when he got fat? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even like this movie now. <laughs> he used to be such a fucking stud. <laughs> oh my god. What does the Bible say about that guy? <laughs> uh. It says you guys should make any of the movie for so many uh, people and like dinner for the ladies for the ladies and then he's not right yeah so not he, for he, me personally not at all but uh no, not me yeah. not I'm not definitely not straight <laughs> I didn't even care I didn't even notice he gained weight I was just like oh does he look different because basically I just, he looks the same to me. I'm trying to connect with the ladies and how disappointed they're going to be. <laughs> He's just a guy, and I don't think that anybody should want to fuck guys. Not even women, because guys, guys are so unattractive mm -hmm. to someone like me. But oh anyway, you know what? You don't want to make out, do you? No. Okay, that's fine. I don't care. Looks like he's oh, from. Sorry. Looks like he's from my state, of Wisconsin, <laughs> doing a lot of drinking and everything. And um, oh, then he he meets Wisconsin shaming people say, now. Okay. That was weird. That's weird. Know, right? <laughs> Just like, but like, also that the editor, like he 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 disparaged Wisconsin. Wisconsin. I better put in some backups facts about Wisconsin. <laughs> they like cheese there. <laughs> it's fine to say that everyone who comes out as gay gets called by the president. We don't need to fact check that. <laughs> but if you call Wisconsin people fat, we better put up a thing. <laughs> Like going through the veins cheese wings or something like that. Is that Polly Shore's voice? Um, it sounds like Polly Shore's voice. It was Polly Shore, absolutely. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So he meets his mom in Asgard. Yeah. And um, so this here's the scene. Everyone fails at who they're supposed to be for. The measure of a person, of a, a hero, is how well they succeed at being who they are. So it's a really nice moment like... between a, a son and mother, that family relationship. Oh, it's good yeah. to see that that strong relationship there. And by the way, the, Chris Hemsworth is the perfect choice to play Thor. He's, 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 he does a great he's, job. He's yeah. great in, in that we film and in the, the so Thor bad. movies. <laughs> <laughs> he was great. <laughs> really, is the, I can't imagine another person playing that role yeah. um, but the thing that she said you know, you the measure of the person a hero is how well they succeed at being who they are, they are. so you can probably take that a couple of different ways yeah so one way that you talked about it is well i mean you see it's so gonna be anti-gay right this, this is gonna be an anti-gay or no where, like uh, who does god want you to be okay sure sure <laughs> that's right you don't get to be who you want to be that's right. That'll be, yeah. Especially kind of Disney movies, but there's so many movies. Uh, you need to be just your best self and just follow your heart and do what you think is right. Be who you think you need to be. And it's really, it's still in that same vein of thinking of you can define reality, what is good for you, what is true for you, pursue that and, and, and just do that and you be you, right? Um, but biblically, that that doesn't really work rightly understood because no, there there is truth and there is falsehood. There is right and there is wrong. There is a way that oh, is just good gonna go to live according I... to godliness. And there's a way. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> they can train. They can steer anything into the tra into the trans train. Yeah. <laughs> way that is not godly, and so you can't define reality for yourself, and it'd be necessarily right or good. And so you could take that quote that way. By the way, I also, I love that clip. I love just as far as the emotional engagement between the two characters, between the son and the mother. And it, it's so pivotal for his character at that point. It's so mm -hmm. needed. And I love seeing Here's that the point. relationship I want to see where you're going. presented in a positive light. But you also, you could interpret her words a bit differently. Yeah, it, if you take it, if you if you look closely at what she's saying, you, you can't be somebody that you're not. Right. You can only be 
who you are, and the best version of that is to to live out the way you're supposed to live. Now, he, yeah, he's failed, but get back on that horse and, and go, you know, get back up. And so in one way, it, it kind of contradicts this idea that you can be whatever you want. She said yeah. you can only be you, but be the best version of you. So, so go out and do your very best no matter what, even though you failed, even though you, you're down. Yeah. Get back up. What point is he making? <laughs> I'm sorry. It may well be just one of those. Uh, I'm like on the edge of my seat waiting for the fucking point. <laughs> it might just be one of those pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Uh, I don't get things. it. I don't even understand what they're taking issue with. And go. And from a biblical perspective, we would say, you know what? God has made every single human being in his image. He's made every one of us unique, different gifts, different abilities. And we are to do what he's called us to do to the best of our ability and trust him with the results of it. And we will all be limited to one degree or another, different strengths and weaknesses, uh, different characteristics. And that's okay. Right. But we are to do what he's made us to do to the best of our ability and trust him with all that. And, um, and that makes sense in the biblical worldview. And so if he's made you a male, he made you a male on purpose. There it is. Female. There it is. Oh, it took a long way. That was such way. a long road is. to get to we're transphobes. <laughs> God, I didn't have to listen to all that shit. Just say it up front. Uh, <laughs> say it immediately. Oh, my Holy God. Holy fuck. I'm sorry, Arden. You were right. I thought it was going to be it, like God make. I, I mean, be who you are, right? Since they think this is like a, a, a leftist, like sort of politically woke agenda sort of movie it makes sense that when they hear be who you are from that lens that they're that's immediately where they're going to take it rather than like what you know they put a god colored paint on it but it was basically the same message of like hey everyone's different you know just kind of like be you and do you the best you can like they couldn't just leave it there they had they had to add in the but have you heard it the woke way <laughs> man you're fucking wrong <laughs> Uh, so we are here tonight helping to raise money for Team Shannon Q for the MS Walk. And thank you for everyone who has donated so far. And we, instead of Super Chats, we are hoping that you will jump in the description of either Shannon Q's video or my video and find the link there. And we've since our last one, we've had Melody Ford. Melody, regular viewer of the channel. Thank you, Melody, for your support. I support you. In fact, you just echoed my sentiments exactly. Thank you, Melody. For the $25 donation. We appreciate that. Oh, are we ready to go back to these guys? Let's no. do it. I'm Let's mad focus. now, though. Uh, because, like, that was the he... most meandering. No, pause for a second. Because that yep. was, like, the most <laughs> meandering bullshit. We, that's the longest we've sat and listened to them. Because they couldn't get to the goddamn point. I wonder why that is. Do you think it's because they needed to, like... Do a little song and dance for a longer period of time to get around the fact that be the best version of yourself is just like a normal, healthy thing to say to a person. Both of so them they went out of their to, way. Like, they, they had to go out of their way to say, oh, we love the emotion of this scene. That it that right. if it made you mm -hmm. feel a certain, if it made you feel warm, that's okay because we felt warm too. But there's something hidden below that surface of feeling good and warm with this mother-son love. Yeah, they can't just let it be what it is, which is just like a warm mother-son moment in yeah. a fictional movie. They ha it has to, they have to reinforce that there's something nefarious going on in the subtext somewhere. Or that if you, if you really, th this I think is the more nefarious version is that if you really believe and resonate with hearing the message the only thing that I care about is that you are the best version of yourself. That's the only thing anybody can do is be the best version of yourself. And what that means for you is that you're going to be queer or you're going to be trans or you're going to be an atheist or you're going to be whatever, whatever thing they don't approve of that is innocuous in reality. Then why, they have to find a way to make that unacceptable. Your, why couldn't be the best version of yourself? Just be, be like Jesus. Mm. They didn't see it that way. That, good point. And that's more biblical. Absolutely. We're all supposed to be striving towards that that center point. They're all aiming for the same goal there. How the hell did I end up with a more biblically accurate position than these two <laughs> Exactly. 
Maybe yeah. they've got an agenda beyond Jesus. Yeah, it's almost Maybe. like dun, dun, dun. capitalism and their streaming service get money from people. I'm not even sure what part of the and their movie bigotry we're in. and their bullshit. Uh, we're right, we're right we're right now at uh, on Asgard. Right, where they're going back in time to get all the Infinity Stones, right? No, yeah. I, the, I want, seems... Now I want to see if they're going to go off on Thor for threatening to rip off that guy's arms and shove him up his butt. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, he's new provided master. for you and how he's made you uh, different personalities, introvert, extrovert, all these different things that he has made you with love and care and with purpose. Yeah, so the next few clips are actually going to be between two characters that we haven't talked about yet, and that is <laughs> Hawkeye and Black Widow. Yep. Oh. Lots of stuff between and, us. Yeah, they're, they're mm. best friends, really, throughout the film. You see them becoming <laughs> very good friends. And um, so in this first scene, the movie starts, actually, with Hawkeye playing with his family. Mm -hmm. And the snap, he's not there at that battle, and the snap happens, and he turns around, and suddenly his family His whole gone. family's gone in the they're snap. They're just like disappeared into ashes so and his life has disappeared basically. yeah so his life is wrecked and he actually becomes an assassin here he is the guy, a guy who's the best archery guy in the world yeah. and he becomes an assassin archery um, not guy. really the best yeah. way to be archer, archer is so difficult to, to <laughs> archery guy. <laughs> time yeah murderous but, assassin uh, like he is all out right now once I am except uh, paul you're muted uh, can you guys see that underneath the? Uh, yeah, the yeah. For my dog, yeah. There's a piece of the non. See, so they, but so now fact check guys eight. making jokes. Right, but the fact check guys wrong too, because when Hawkeye becomes Ronan, he's going after the worst of the worst, the people who should have already had a death penalty under anything else. Mm -hmm. He's not an assassin running around as a hired gun taking people out. He is desperately taking all the things in the world that are still fucked up. How did these people survive while my family mm. yeah, went away? None of you are going to continue to exist. Fuck this world. That's where Hawkeye's at. That's not a murderous assassin. That's a guy who has got the hyper vigilant sense of I am the bringer of true justice, getting revenge for what was done to all the good people who were made to go away. These guys don't even understand the characters. I mean, arguably still murderous because he is still just out here killing people. But Right. But not for money is the important part. Yeah. He's yeah. Not getting paid. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe he is getting paid. Who um, knows? But, he, he, you know, chips. he's killing the bad guys. Flights to Japan aren't cheap. So. <laughs> Man shows up and they have this little bit of a plan, this little bit of a hope. Um, Black Widow tracks down Hawkeye and this is he just oh, finished assassinating <laughs> somebody. And here's what we see. Don't give me hope. I'm sorry I couldn't give it to you sooner. Don't give me hope. Yeah. Why would somebody... To be fair, this is one of those things. They played like five minutes, and I had to just, you know, trim it down to that. So. Mm. I can Not understand that, though. Hope. Isn't that what you... Like, can't you understand that? Like, if you have been in, like, the dregs, like... It, the, the absolute most de desperate state for so long and you see somebody that you care about all of a sudden like giving you yeah a lifeline and what we're getting ready to see yeah right. what we're get, getting ready to see from these guys are people who are only willing to look at hope through a particular lens because the hope that they're advocating for could never possibly be a false hope that results in disappointment, even though the reality is that's exactly what religions, including theirs, have been peddling forever. But they're still selling this, that the hope from Jesus will never fail, which is a fucking lie. Oh, fuck them. But they they want to, like, they, why would somebody say that they, they don't give me hope? Ah, it's because they know that it might be a false hope. This is where, from a biblical worldview, we need to be relying on the one hope that can never be a false. I just, I need to go take a shower for doing their job for them. <laughs> let's all, let's all pray together for my MS to be cured. Let's, yes. all, however many hundreds of people are watching this, yep. let's all Born pray together. Now. Yep. For my MS to be cured. What a miracle that would be because it would convince me that if, if it was absolutely cute, if I woke up tomorrow and I no, no longer had MS symptoms and I had a clear MRI, 
Wow, what a coup that would be. That would be one of those miracles you assholes talk about all the time, especially since I'm a public atheist. So God should want someone like me especially to be cured of my MS. So let's all pray together for my MS to be cured. Dear God, please cure my multiple sclerosis so that I don't have to worry anymore about waking up in the morning and being exhausted and having involuntary muscle spasms and being in pain and having like mental fog and not being able to do the things that I always want to do or having to struggle to do the things that I want to do. Amen. I hope you please cure my MS and I hope you join everybody else on this stream in helping me cure my MS too, especially the Christians who should absolutely want to because I'm doing this in earnest. Because if anybody wants this prayer to come, it would be me because I actually have the disease. Amen. 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 So let's see what happens. <laughs> my guess is fucking nothing. Same with anybody else who's prayed like I have. For something also, like that to happen. Even if it happened, would it be particularly remarkable when there's still like kids with cancer out there? Yeah, like, well, exactly. <laughs> that's a hundred percent right. But like it's absolutely infuriating to me. Like this shit infuriates me the most. Like the miracle claims and the hope claims, and they're like, Well, let's give you false hope. Yeah. You, shouldn't you just have false hope? Shouldn't you just have hope in something that you can't rely on fucking at all? Isn't that better than none at all? No, it's not. No, I'm sorry, I'm a pragmatist. And focusing on things that I can do, like raising money for like somebody who's going to do research and, and help people who have the disease that are invalid. Like that's something I can do. Or I could sit around on my ass and like fold my hands and say words to an empty room. <clears throat> like I wish more people would like less, if less people prayed and more people actually did some shit, we would be far less farther behind than we are right now. And maybe Speaking I wouldn't what we have can to worry do. about whether or not I can wake up in the morning one day and walk. But okay. Go ahead. Pray. Thanks. Speaking of what we can do, we've had $100 come in. We've had another $50 from Melody Ford on your team, Shannon. Uh, Shannon, Yay! for all the giggles you have provided me, I truly support you. Sorry, I wasn't funny just now. I was angry. <laughs> <laughs> Well, some angry people. I'll be funny again in a sec. I'm sorry. <laughs> some people really like it when you're angry. And think that that's great. So, uh, and another fifty dollars to my team from an anonymous donor. Thank you so much. Uh, you know who you are, and we appreciate that you don't feel like the left hand needs to know what the right hand is doing. So we appreciate you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone, for Bond, demonstrating. Right? But why would oh, he? Sorry, I didn't mean to start that one. Demonstrating how uh, how great our community can be. Well, because he's afraid, I would assume that's going to be a false hope, that he'll get his hopes up and he'll uh, think there'll be some sort of healing, some sort of bringing back to the family, something to make things better. He'll get, you know, he'll build up some positive thinking along those lines and it'll be crushed. Mm -hmm. And then that'll break him even more than he's already broken. And one of the reasons I love that clip is not only the friendship that you see there between those two, but also it really shows, I mean, this guy, as you just said, if you watch the whole movie, he just took down a bunch of bad guys. He's a strong character. He's got, I mean, it's pretty amazing what he can do there. But yet he's also broken and vulnerable, right? He, and you see the pain of him losing his family right there and, and the fear he has mm -hmm. of uh, losing them again in an emotional sense if he has hope and is dashed again. And, and so, and I think for a lot of people, and this is a movie, of course, but um, people in real life can be afraid of hope because they've been broken by life in different circumstances. Right. Uh, you, but, you a, know, I hate that. People aren't afraid of hope. People are mm. skeptical of false hope. The reason that when she came to him, he was willing to have hope is because he trusted her and he knew that she wouldn't come to him unless there was something to hold on to. Mm. And they're advocating that people look to something that has no promises at all. Yeah. And saying that they're equivalent. And they can fuck themselves for that. For sure they can fuck themselves for that. As somebody who consistently gets people sending me the, oh, so-and-so got cured, their MS got cured, maybe you should pray more. Oh, I'm sorry, that one person's MS got cured in 1970, and it's a tenuous claim, and you believe it, so the rest of us can go fuck ourselves? Like, do you think no one else that had this disease ever prayed? 
Yeah. Like, what's so fucking special about her? Like, like, what are you really saying? You're saying that that of the, all the people that have ever had multiple sclerosis or cancer or fucking cerebral palsy or like insert disease here in their entire lives, that every once in a while God spins a fucking wheel and goes, "That bitch," and I should I, I should be like, "Please put me on the wheel." Go fuck yourself. Yeah. <clears throat> God's wheel can go to hell because he doesn't even need a wheel because what he could do is go, no, that disease doesn't exist anymore because he fucking invented it. If you believe in him, diseases don't exist in a vacuum. I like the fact that they're also really impressed with what is clearly the weakest of the Avengers. <laughs> Right. I mean, he's the Aquaman of this group. <laughs> oh, I like him though. I, I like him fine, and he's the one that took out Scarlet Witch. But you know, he's Archer guy. They got to give some. <laughs> they got to give Archer guy Bo, Bowman something guy. to do. <laughs> he is the world's best Archer. guy. He has that old plaque yeah. somewhere for sure. Mm -hmm. They really, guy. really know this. This film franchise that's, that's right they, impressive. They're and you can tell steeped. because he's wearing a nintendo shirt and there's a lord of the rings poster <laughs> behind him and i saw a ninja turtle somewhere yeah. on set and there's popcorn there so we know that they're, they're serious about it steeped in the lore as they say absolutely i'll do a marvel trivia quiz against these suckers any day of the week <laughs> all day <laughs> you would you might even do okay in a genesis quiz against these guys uh, yeah i think you would actually <laughs> Except I don't think there's answers there. Mm. Valid. If I, I think of this, this is in a non-serious way. Right. But I, I, I growing up in Green Bay, you know, the the Packers, they they they're usually pretty good. And, you know, right. they more championships than any team. Yeah. One of our rivals, the Minnesota Vikings, they've never won the big game, and their fans are kind of like that. Where it's like, <laughs> you know, they 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 always expect. Are you cracking down. on Vikings fans? I am. Fans. I am. <laughs> and I have to do it because of what you did to me one time. No, no. <laughs> because it's manly to do it. that. I love that Is this lending jokes. clarity in in any way to anything? <laughs> no, they have inside jokes because they're besties. I see. Something love that was very clearly explained. We're going to give a worse and analogy. There's no for way it. that they're in love with each other. They just have no. Love. That's right. <laughs> they're both in they love don't... with Thor, obviously, but mm. not not each other. If one of them changes the way his legs cross so their feet are pointed at each other, <laughs> that's a proposition. <laughs> <laughs> Because yeah, yeah. you called me a Vikings fan when I didn't know it. But anyway, <laughs> that was great. But um, <laughs> no, they're always expecting a letdown. And even Bengals fans are kind of like, oh, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> and it's, there's that hope they get, and then it hurts because yeah. they've. Actually, as an Oilers fan, I'm relating to this right now. I know that doesn't mean anything to most people, but. <laughs> it does to me. They bought into that hope for a little excited. bit. You think, yeah. oh, yeah, this could be it. And then and it's it, dashed again. And then it gets taken away. And this, in a serious way, right. that's what happened to Hawkeye. And he doesn't want to have to go through that pain again in fact he's allowing his anger and his bitterness to fuel him to give him right. some purpose right now even though he knows it's not right right it's, True story. it's driving his life at that point and he doesn't want to have have to face that hurt again um now thankfully in the storyline he does yeah and we're gonna see another character uh, we're gonna see these two again and this time they're chasing down one of the infinity stones but in order to get that infinity stone one of them, because they're their best friends. It's called a soul stone. Yeah, the, one of them has to give their life for. He the just other. rolled his eyes thing. at soul stone. Like I can't wait for the Ooh. biblical. You know how do how should we look at things like the infinity stones from a biblical worldview? <laughs> how many infinity stones did Jesus have? <laughs> <laughs> he would have had to have all of them. He was all of On, them. Unless and the gauntlet in... <laughs> at the same time. Unless in the beginning the was the word. Because then they're just in drawers. They don't even matter. Yeah, that's right. right. In yeah. the beginning yeah. was the word and the word was inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. They have to give up what they love the most and these are best friends. So... Actually, would we say that Infinity Stones are uh, basically God's horcruxes? Is that... <laughs> Although, yeah. when, well, I don't want to give spoilers for other things, but later on, we might see some Infinity Stones just laying around in a drawer somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, it's, Shan you know, Shan was saying, that's yeah, literally what I yeah. <laughs> so They're 
basically arguing over who should die. And he's saying, well, because I've done these horrible things, it should be me. And so let's take a look. Natasha, you know what I've done. You know what I've become. Well, I don't judge people on their worst mistakes. Because she's like Jesus. Uh, yeah, God does. God absolutely judges you on your worst mistakes. If, <laughs> if your trivial mistakes, in fact. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you should. You didn't. So, it's interesting because as people who have sinned against our holy creator, right. we are accountable to God and we deserve his judgment, but he offers forgiveness through Jesus Christ, who, by the way, is our ultimate hope. Going back to that and last clip, That's right. a real hope that we can have that is never going to let you down. Right. People will inevitably let you down because we make mistakes. Oh, yeah. And so if you're placing your faith in somebody else, somebody who's fallen, eventually you're probably going to be let down pretty severely. But Jesus will never do that. He's that ultimate hope. But God is... Are we getting a sermon? Oh, Matt's got his Jesus hat on. Yep. <laughs> I'm just... I'm just repping the cred since I got there an hour before these guys. <laughs> I just don't understand what they mean by hope. Like, well, they're they, they like to conflate, right? They're conflating what the movie says would be hope with the hope of your being reunited with loved ones, or they just want you to have a continuous renewal of hope despite evidence that it's not warranted. Yeah, th their hope is a proper uh fictional carrot on a stick it's always yeah. the same dis it's just around the corner jesus is just coming back tomorrow i see any day now right. uh you know and and even if it doesn't happen in your lifetime we know it's going to happen i literally had a debate or i literally had a conversation with a church of christ preacher who put up a slide that uh said we while we can't know that any individual prayer has been answered, we can know that prayers have been answered. And I was like, hang on, if you can't know it for any individual thing in the series, how did you determine that anything in the series has been answered? I, and he, he's just like, Faith, cool. You know what their hope is? Their hope is like attempting to climb the stairs in an Asher. Yes. That's that's what their hope is. It's it's an, an it looks like it's feasible, but it's an eternally futile endeavor. Perception of feasibility without actual feasibility. It's like climbing the stairs at an Asher. Or Sisyphus. we we have a, another donation. Thank you so much. We are here tonight supporting MS Walk, and we have Bumble Bray, long. I will bring time supporter of the channel. Uh, have Free. you have you tried asking Thor? Maybe <laughs> Loki seems like something an Asgardian would be more willing to help with. The Bible guy is more prone to inflicting than curing. Well, he's fat now and nobody wants to fuck him, so <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say no. Not disinterested. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, at least, at least not those two. Just those two are disinterested. Tim and Brian now. are a little less. <laughs> <laughs> They're Even that's debatable. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but Doss I'm pretty sure there's. A, I'm pretty that. sure there's a lot of people that would give Fat Thor a jump. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't not. Give it it's fair. fair. <laughs> I think all of us can have him as a past. Who placed their faith? in Christ and he doesn't hold those sins against them. They're no worse matter crime. what your sins are, no right. matter what your worst sins are, those so, can be forgiven by the so Lord much of Christ. Bible was written by people who murdered other people. Who Moses wrote five books and he, yeah. he murdered whether somebody. Whether you did. murder someone or whether you're God. gay, God will forgive you. Did he just say so much of the Bible was written by people who yeah, murdered other people? Yeah, that's one for the poster. So much like, of the Bible was... <laughs> and yet, the back it's cover. true. Yeah, it I, I'm not... I'm just, I'm surprised that he was willing to say that out loud because usually they go into a dissonant state and try to like obfuscate that. But he just like flat out said like, yeah, most of the people who wrote the Bible were totes fucking murderers. <laughs> Even though that's like, that's a whole ass commandment. That's, um, okay. All right. Well, I'm glad we're here now. That's good. <laughs> 
David, David. Uh, stole Bathsheba's uh, wife, uh, stole Bathsheba from Uriah, yeah, Uriah and had him murdered. And then uh, and Paul, yeah, he condemned innocent people to death and, and was guilty of killing Christians. And they wrote a huge section of the Bible, God can forgive those. Um, so, but imagine always being remembered for your worst mistakes. That's kind of what we see in the Bible, right? Yeah. So we, a lot of the characters, a lot of our heroes of the faith, the Bible's not afraid to point out their big flaw. Which is a great uh, demonstration of the authenticity of the Bible. Right. It's not trying to hide the, the flaws of those people because the Bible's not written by people, ultimately it's written by God. And ultimately the Bible's not about any one person or people, it's about God and what he's doing. You're not saying that God wrote the Bible. When you say God wrote. used people to write right. it, right? Yeah. So he inspired The Holy Spirit is inspiring the, Holy Spirit the text. Inspired yeah. people to Super write it. Yeah. But the information that's all in those pages of, of the Bible it are the thoughts of the word of, of yeah. God, right? And that's why it's called the literal word of God. And we can trust all that it says. And it gives us, like you said, that hope. And what an amazing hope it is, not it's only the literal hope for word of life. God, because they're using the word literal in the wrong way, just like all those other people <laughs> are using it. Right. And that's how it ended up in the Oxford English Dictionary as a correct usage of literal where literal literally means figurative. <laughs> I just hate the English language and what people have done uh, to it. And yet, I also love it because language is completely our plaything. Mm -hmm. um, but hope for eternity. Hope for healing. Which is hope, what people long for. Oh, absolutely. Hope, hope for, for a restoration. Yeah. People, and, and apparently the Bible offers... Basically, the hope that, well, when you die, things will be better, I think is yeah. the general. You get a new body. And so yeah. that, if you don't get healed while you're down here, if if Shannon's MS is not miraculously cured because of the prayer we said, you'll get a new body. Um, and unfortunately for Shannon, she'll get a new body in hell that will be tortured forever. It's true. Yes. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> how convenient that that body is working at, at peak perfection. Absolutely. <laughs> capacity yeah. um yeah so we're supposed to consider that our sufferings we have just momentary sufferings of course right here and if you believe a christian but yet we're supposed to also think that jesus suffered something that was a, a sacrifice in some way we we're suffering shannon will suffer for you know somewhere between 40 and 100 years or so thereabouts that's momentary suffering but Jesus was, had a bad weekend. That's a that's the sacrifice. Yep. The big sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, I, I remember that light momentary suffering. That's in the Bible, right? Light moment suffering. I think that's yeah. almost word. I think that's literally what it says. <laughs> <laughs> to things being made right, because every one of us, we know deep down in our heart of hearts, something's wrong. This world is broken. We're broken. Mm -hmm. What's the answer? The only right answer is found in Christ. Yep. It gives us hope for eternity. So, and this this shows a great thing about friendship as well, because a true friend can forgive and still love that person, even because we do make mistakes. Absolutely. And, and you see this true friendship here. And now, um, they they battle try, for they try to battle for who's going to lay down their they're life. They're fighting each other. Yeah, they're fighting each other. <laughs> they're trying to, to die down. for each other. Right. Right. Um, and so we're going to just show the very end of what happens there, and we'll get an example of the sacrificial love. So. The, this whole thing, is, I mean, they're kind of wrong because they're like a true friend can forgive someone for their mistakes, but Hawkeye didn't wrong her. She's nope. not forgiving him for what he did to her. She's forgiving him for running around killing a bunch of bad guys. Um, that puts her more in the position of Jesus because... I can't forgive Paul for wronging somebody else. I can only forgive Paul for what he's done to me. And Paul's never done anything for me, so it, or to me, so it's it's easy. But the notion of, oh, a friend can forgive a friend. Yeah, if if Hawkeye had done something to her and she she decided to forgive him in the end, that would be magnanimous. But her saying, oh, I, I don't mind that you went and killed all those people. So what? <laughs> Can I say something for one second? And it's going to initially seem inappropriate. <laughs> I had to run and quickly use the washroom. And while I was in the washroom, I got an email saying that we reached our $5,000 goal. Yay! Yay! That's so Yay! awesome. Let's go. Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm so happy I'm going to raise my goal again. I still have like five weeks. I can still raise more money. Oh, oh yeah. that's so Don't exciting. stop there, people. Keep going. Thank you. Squeeze you drive like, everything you've got. 
I'm sad I was on in the bathroom. <laughs> but also that's appropriate. Yeah, there's like <laughs> there we go. dollars too much. So who could somebody go in and reduce it by twenty one dollars? <laughs> because we don't want to be over the goal no, at all. I can't take it back. Isn't that amazing? That's, that's so wonderful. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, all of you guys, for being here with me to do it. It's uh this is no, like we're the not... easiest yes ever. Oh, this is so much fun. <laughs> Matt and I were like hang out with Paul and Shannon for a while and talk about Endgame. Yeah, that sounds like a good fun thing we would do anyway. For I think it was the not. fastest yes either of us <laughs> given to anything. Yeah. Uh, mm. Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you. Like it's this is amazing. I'm like it's it's exceeded my expectations beyond. I I, I was excited to hang out with you guys. Whatever happened happened whatever money we raised we raised it was great like but this is amazing like this is astounding i didn't think i was going to get a thousand dollars when i first started to do this and the fact that we're at over five thousand now is oh gosh and i can't wait to stand up <laughs> i wonder where my team is my team has to be still first but there's no way somebody could have surpassed me today i need to keep in first place though so that i can stand on stage and go thank you to all the atheist community <laughs> <laughs> and just watch people's faces. That was my favorite last. <laughs> Jake yeah. for uh, Jake, Jake gave seventy five to put us over the top. Thank you, wow. Jake. Uh, I cannot believe they compared a sports team losing the game to Hawkeye losing his family. Right? That's messed mm -hmm. up. True. Hashtag coffee tables get in the way more than they help. <gasps> All right. So I'll allow it because you put us over the edge. I will yeah. allow it <laughs> just as once. <laughs> you get grace. <laughs> Uh, no there was else. an anonymous donation of $10. Thank you. Another anonymous for $75 with a message. Oh, wow. Hey, now, hey, all. Normally I would be Team Paul, but my mom has MS, so I got to go with Team uh, Shannon tonight. I hope your mom's okay. I hope mom's doing okay. Thank you, everyone. This has been great. Thank you. This is awesome. <laughs> I didn't mean to distract from the fun stuff. No, but we're, it's we're good. No. <laughs> Please no. Bummer. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my goodness, guys. Uh, this is like one yeah. of the most painful moments in like a Marvel movie ever. Uh bummer. Like, Love you know these guys. Death is hilarious. Oh not funny all this. <laughs> Same time. Yeah. It was it's moving and imagine being a hard That is like a that's a that's a terrible mistake. I don't know if I can forget that. It's like your worst mistake. No. Um the, uh, but, <laughs> but you know what you do see though in that clip truly is you see sacrifice. And yeah. again, we talk about it resonates because someone's laying down their life. It is being sacrificial, it is unselfish. And here's Hawkeye losing his best friend after he's already lost his family, but right. it's for the hope that all of Bummer. that could be yeah. reached. Comparing Scarlet <laughs> Widow to Jesus here. Sounds well, a little bit like it. That sounds like what they're I, doing. I think you mean Black Widow? Oh, Black yeah, yeah. Widow, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. They're comparing Black... They're... Scarlett Johansson. It got in my head and mixed up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they're... But she was an assassin. <laughs> <laughs> She was a paid assassin. She definitely yeah, she was, was a naturalist. Yeah. Right. Red Room God, graduate. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, okay. If this was Frank Turek, he would be trying to explain how the origin of, of sacrifice being a thing that humans consider to be honorable was Jesus. That no one thought oh, that no, before Jesus existed, who would have even thought that sacrifice was noble? Yeah, no, altruism. Thing? People were like, yep. fuck altruism. Every man exactly. for themselves. <laughs> Wait, Tur Turek has legitimately suggested that prior to Jesus, nobody? Yeah, so he wrote a book and I debated him on Unbelievable. Oh, about does this Matt point. not know that he wrote a book? No, his son. Wasn't it his oh, son that wrote well, a book? Matt, he, it, it, wrote he and his son, just about, like Frank. About the Marvel and Star Wars universes? And I and debated him on unbelievable, and that is his point: that altruism, that that basically altru Christianity is the origin of stories celebrating people who sacrifice themselves. Surely there are multiple examples. I in brought the real those up. world from before that. <laughs> I have a book downstairs. 
that goes through countless examples. Well, I guess they're countable, so I shouldn't say countless, but mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Look that up. Unbelievable. Apologia, Frank Turek. It was, uh, it was a frustrating time. Stored because that's what they're attempting to do with these uh, is to get all these infinity stones when they did exist, you know, travel through time and then back get those things. Them, put them back together. Um, yep. And then they, when that happens, well, because they went back to the past, Thanos was alive back then, was able to see that it was going to happen. So now he's back in the picture. Yeah. And so that leads to. <laughs> what was the very minor spoiler that they were warning about earlier? <laughs> Uh, Thor were... killing Thanos, right? Oh, right, yeah. But now they're just they're literally giving up the ending in the movie. Yeah. They, they've stopped. I guess if you haven't seen the movie, you're fine. <clears throat> the one giant, huge, epic battle. Mega battle. That's like the last the hour. The culmination of, the... of all it's 23 like, movies. Yeah, it's right? like the last hour yeah, of the film yeah. is just this battle. Yeah. So if you like Paul, action. Pause a second, Paul. I, I apologize. I don't want to derail on this, but did you bring up Joseph Campbell and the oh yeah we we talked hero about length thousand about heroes favorite, yeah hero's journey absolutely yeah and and we talked at length turk doesn't acknowledge that those stories come before jesus some of them uh so the conceit what he his notion is that those stories all only had part of the picture uh and that Jesus was the the culmin because oh and this is I introduced the word Mary Sue to him because this was new new to him after he um, wrote a book about to be okay <laughs> so <laughs> so because because all those other heroes they were flawed you see Matt and so because the, the reason they were flawed is because no one could even imagine a perfect being and so superhero Superman Kal El can be you know, this more of an imagined per perfect being because now we have a model of a perfect being. But all the heroes before Jesus, they were flawed. And I was like, is that not just a literary device where we can relate? We, we can't really relate to people who don't have flaws. And we have a term for that. It's called Mary Sue, where that's just a sign of poor writing. Well, that he did. He stared at me blankly because that was, yeah. I need you to do me a favor, and that is the next time you do anything about Frank Turek, um, under Frank's name, you should put author and speaker. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to do that. I am going to do that. <laughs> Amazing. That's a throwback. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we I love like a good callback. That is a yeah, good exactly. callback. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Anybody who wasn't here earlier in the stream, that's a you problem. You're gonna have to rewind. <laughs> <laughs> there's not a whole lot of movies that do. More. So I should. So there's seven minutes left. I don't know if do we want to try and plow through of the seven minutes that are left. Sure. Yeah, we okay. can do it. We're all good still. I'm good. Try to be good and not say. comment. I can't believe seconds. in a three-hour movie we've only gotten through where. <laughs> black widow sacrifices and there's only seven minutes of their review left i thought there'd be like another 40 minutes of their review no 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 they, because they're they're picking and choosing like let's take inventory of the actual points in the movie there was a a gay person went on a date okay important mm -hmm. thor had a bad body <laughs> yeah thor, thor, is thor isn't, thor isn't as handsome as i want him to be um, Iron doesn't Man want hope. and Captain America disagreed oh, right. on whether or not a shield should be around fascism. the world. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> disagreed on fascism. Um, Scarlet Wit or I, I keep wanting to call her Scarlet Black Witch, Widow. Scarlet Johansson. Black Widow went to go get Ronan get b while he was being in an assassin and said the word hope at one point. Um, Mrs. Colin Jost. Yes, yeah, Mrs. Colin Jost. Yeah. Yes, because we identify women by their husbands, um, and also um, they she sacrificed herself. That's okay. it. I think. I think it's uh, no five one, points. I, but now Did we jump. That's ahead. all I remembered from Endgame. I can now. <laughs> That's I it, right? Those, those are the high notes. That's what everybody. I don't remember about. anything about Scarlet Wait, Witch peeling the armor off of Thanos, or you no. Know? They've they've literally yada yada it over America's ass. I don't know. I know. Yeah, we I didn't know. even touch on that. We blew right past it. Did, did they mention it at all? No. And nope. time travel. 
They, the only the only time travel mission they mentioned was the Soul Stone one. They didn't mention any others. But the Soul Stone wasn't a time travel mission. It was to uh, get the stone so that they could do the time travel. So they that's, were still let's, in the let's present. talk about that. So was it because they had to go? They also went through the quantum realm. Oh, to get... yeah, you're right. Because Thanos already had the Soul Stone because he sacrificed yeah. Gamora. Right, and they had to. You're right. Yeah, they had to, they had to jump back before. Yeah. Yeah. I was. Which means I that Gamora would have never gotten the time stone. So. Right, or, and that's why Gamora is never... now. They have this Gamora is alive now. Yeah, because right? there's an alternate. Yeah. 29, 2019 Gamora. Time wibbly wobbly. By the time way, that's my, that was one of the best things about Guardians Three, was that Gamora didn't fall into his arms. Oh, I, I loved um, that. I loved that that she had her own trajectory. Yeah. Yeah. That it wasn't just, oh, you loved a different version of me. I guess I'll love you back. I wish these guys didn't exist. We could spend two hours, just the four of us, I think, <laughs> just talking about Marvel. Oh, for Although, sure. It would be way be more fair. interesting. If, mm -hmm. if uh, Gamora came up to me and said, hey, you loved a different version of me, would you love me too? I'd probably just say yes. <laughs> I mean, I realize that I've flipped it from Star-Lord mm -hmm. to Gamora, but I'd probably just say yes. Well, Out I mean... Fear? He loved all versions of her how can you he not love him back <laughs> if captain kirk can kiss green women so can i <laughs> okay <laughs> arden arden has a green shirt i'm gonna say you guys am. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you guys can figure that out after the show is done arden's definitionally the hottest bitch around based on that fucking black widow if you don't get that bob and cut your and dye your hair red, I don't even. Did you fair, see? That? I have a sibling with red hair, so I already know it works. We're both similarly pale, bitch. They're like, more pale than I am, though. You are doing a disservice to your face and all of us if you don't fucking get that bob. Apparently, because I saw it, I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> That's what I said. Right? I looked at mine and I was like, man, nah, whatever, that's fine. It's just like my hair, but curly. I, I looked at hers and I was like, holy fuck. Somebody like, asked in a in a, a patron hangout the other day, kind of uh which Marvel character I would be and which one I would have Arden as. Um and I didn't do Black Widow because I, I made her Jean Grey. But, oh yeah, I mean, to be oh, fair, if you're gonna give me like god level powers, like I'm not gonna say no to that. So. <laughs> I'm a rogue. I'm a team rogue all day, every day. The, she, she, rogue was my favorite, favorite character in any comic, and that they've destroyed her in every movie. Like if you only know Rogue yeah. from the movies, you yeah. don't know rogue and also it's funny because i'm captain marvel there and i'm the carol danvers version of captain yep. mark marvel which means that i which means you're not going to be mentioned in this whole thing <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> which, <laughs> which means i should be in a coma and part of my consciousness should be trapped inside rogue but whatever that's fine and, hey, and by the way my powers uh, Irrelevant side note, because I know we've got like seven minutes to get through, uh, and I'm not going to go into any details, but X-Men 97 is single-handedly saving Disney Plus's Marvel stuff. Oh, yeah. In, for me. Yeah. yeah, it's been really good. We are enjoying it here as well, very much. And I didn't I, even watch the original series. I didn't either. I, the animation is a, is you... a little off-putting to me. Like, I can't tell if, like, the characters, they seem like they're, like, 3D models that You've have, broken like, some, Shannon. like, 2D auto texture mm -hmm. it's weird i will rage quit like my so. own screen none of you watched the original x-men cartoon correct no nope. i'm the only person here who watched the original you're the only person in the world that watched it you are so no, full no, of no. shit <laughs> you're a bunch of yeah, just fucking but Shannon's i'm mad there's a reason it was fucking rebooted and it's not because no one fucking watched it <laughs> shannon's <laughs> real angry right now <laughs> you Stop. And I so live to make Shannon angry. Shut up. Because the only reason the MCO as it exists right now exists is because that cartoon emboldened so many people of my generation that loved it. 
to make the original fucking X-Men movie. And if it wasn't for the original X-Men movie, there wouldn't have been a door open for the MCU that we're talking about right now. There wouldn't now. even be a Kevin Feige. <laughs> nope. I know. He worked on that. Nope. Our fandom fucking made that happen, and they did us fucking dirty with the X-Men movie. Yes. They did us fucking dirty with the X-Men movie. I don't know. Well, I, I really like the, the the storyline about what happens when you electrocute a frog. Oh, my God. I swear to God. That's I will so fly bad. to Austin just to fucking punch you in the <laughs> face. Arden! <laughs> I thought it was really weird. <laughs> you know that that's bullshit. Uh I, I, oh, I'm so not going to let you punch her, but I will agree with the sentiment because <laughs> Holly Berry's delivery of a great line from Joss Whedon completely fucked up that character and it's took her so from bad. a god to garbage. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Oh. <laughs> my cheeks are nice. Um, I might like a little so Marvel Thanos. Stuff defeats this initial onslaught by some of the original Avengers, right. and then he starts giving this monologue. He likes the monologue. You sly dog! You got me monologuing! I can't believe it! Or is it right before the wait, monologue? Wait, 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 wait. Did these two dipshits <laughs> yep. <laughs> just skip over everything about Cap getting Mjolnir yeah. in a yeah. fight Mm -hmm. And skip right to Thanos' monologue. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you think that they were going to talk about the movie? So <laughs> like a lot of the movie. <laughs> so uh, actually, I am going to. I, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think Thanos monologues before Mjolnir gets into his hand. Oh, you're right. Yeah. You're right. So maybe they didn't skip it. Mm -hmm. But he he says oh, yeah. he, that he defeats the first wave of these Avengers, but he hasn't done that at the point of this. He just blows up the building. All he does, all he's done that's is blow up. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah, because literally no one perishes in that. The, the right, only right, defeat right, right. that the only defeat that is that simple is when Carol defeats his ship. <laughs> right. And Hulk is already snapped at that point. Yeah. Too. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So there is no defeat. <laughs> Before this initial fight, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Before so, yeah. yeah, let's take a look yeah. at what he says. And as long as there are those that remember what was, there will always be those that are unable to accept what can be. They will resist. Yep, we're all kinds of stubborn. So and you don't action. Want, yeah, that, and lots <laughs> of it, right? <laughs> so you don't want to. Doesn't he mean and cut? <laughs> I think he means well, the blah 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 talky stuff's over now. I think that's I don't know. I don't know what the point reform is. Reform what's already there. That's not going to work. You got to tear down and rebuild. Right, and you can only do that if the people don't remember what was. If right. you destroy that history, got to. Then you're able to do that. So Thanos is like God in just before the flood. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> Except that he God left eight people alive to remember it, mm. and what did they do? Right off the bat, they fuck it all up again. Uh, that may be what he's like getting at. That may be, yeah, because he, we left Noah's family alive, and man, they just kept sinning. Plus, some Nephilim survived in a cave somewhere. I think the really disappointing for them thing for them is we can't do the experiment that would prove this true, which is let's wipe out everybody that exists, start over, and see if they make up the same gods and the same stories. Oh. I'm glad we can't do that experiment, but Me also yeah. like, like, like as a human, I'm glad we can't do that experiment. But also, part of me is like, oh fuck, I wish we could just do it to prove that that's, that's know. never gonna happen. As much as I dislike Rookie Gervais, I watch this show Hot Ones. I just I, I love Hot Ones myself, and I think it's interesting. And I was watching his episode today, and he was describing it like if you wiped out all of science and, I, and i've heard this elsewhere too i'm sure he didn't get sure. it himself if you wiped out all of science eventually if you gave humanity enough time they would come back to understanding and finding out the same things again because they're, they're like a tangible reality that you can glean from interacting with the world if you have the right methodology but if you wiped out all of religion simultaneously you would you would maybe develop this like religion of some kind but it wouldn't manifest in the same exact way because it has to be manifested based on what people know currently and what they're going to 
like glean from like purveying what's around them. And I think that that is like a really important point. It's not a hypothesis you could or would or would want to test. Oh, but I want it's one to. that implicitly, like you would, you know, the answer to that question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we should have, uh... we should probably do a Bayesian analysis to determine what oh. the likelihood <laughs> is. If they come up with the same shit. Sorry, buddy. Bonnie Spiegel, seventy five dollars, says uh, for the cure because MS sucks. Indeed MS does. Sucks. Frank for thirty four dollars. The stream I never knew I needed. Well, we're pleased to you could join us. Thank you for the contribution. How do the kids? Do uh, Nate writes. Thank you. Thank you for all you guys do. My best to you all. We will receive your best. Thank you so much. Those are the new new ones that have come in since last week. Awesome. Also, I'm. I feel like I might be wrong that we may have. Hold on. What did we do? What did I do? Oh no! I no was no! I was right. I was suddenly thought, do we actually have 17 minutes left? But no, I was right. We have seven minutes left. Okay, cool. so we're good. Because 17, I'm not up for. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, I'll give them seven. Assuming they don't say something really ridiculous right away. <laughs> do that to become what you could be. And so that's an idea that we see in our culture is tear yes. down that past. But there's another way you could take that angle as well. There, we, one of the things we see in our culture is there are certain um, things in our past that have been uh, unsavory, certain evil things that have happened in our past right. as a nation, and people want to continually dredge that up. And because they're doing, they were never able to become what we could be. Right. And th and that's unfortunate. So there's some truth in what he's saying, but there's also um, an ideology that's being promoted I mean, there from the bad guy. Well, and usually, I mean, typically a bad. Are they talking about statues now? I think yeah, statues of like Confederate. Leaders or something? That's the impression stop, I'm getting. Just stop bringing it up. We're fine. Our past is fine. Just leave it alone. I read that. But the totally answers are in Genesis. I read that as it, like, well, we're talking no, about he, God killing firstborns and stuff, and we. Yeah, should I might be that. wrong. I oh. was just. It started to sound like it was. Yeah. See. But I should I not it, underestimate their twisted. ability to. Yeah. Right. I mean, it has to be, and so you take something, twist it, and apply it, and that's what's happening in that sort of scenario. So. So Brian, why would why did this movie resonate with us? I mean, we've looked at a lot of uh, several different things from here. There, there's so much more to this oh whole goodness. series and everything. Um, in, in you know, I'm not a huge fan of all of the different Marvel movies. I'm no not shit, comic book guys. <laughs> <laughs> what? We're at the end, and he's asking why did this movie resonate with us? I'm not a huge fan. Yeah, I can tell that, Arrow dude. <laughs> I know you you like, I like some of them yeah, yeah. I like spider-man growing up um, yeah. yeah and so i was never really in that I, in fact I, I only saw two of these in the theater it was just the guardians of the galaxy one because i saw the first one and somebody <laughs> told me tim you're gonna love it because the 80s music in there and i went to see it and i was like this is 70s music come on but i thought it was kind of fun and then i thought well the second one will be <laughs> have that same sort of fun and, yeah. and uh, it was dumb compared to them. but we wow you didn't get it at all <laughs> yeah. i saw the two the guardians music movies. progresses <laughs> With the care, okay, all right. He okay. thought Guardians Two was dumb. <laughs> Guardians that, Two wasn't my favorite. The... Did you not think it was? Did you, you like the ego storyline? I, I didn't how think they it was manifested the best. it. I I thought it was probably the weakest of the three Guardians movies. Yeah. one of the better but Marvel movies. I'll give you that. It, it's still way up there. Like, I could probably off the top of my head name 10 Marvel movies that are way worse than Guardians 2. Uh, mm -hmm. Starting yeah, with 15. I, they, I, you could just start with the other twos, like Iron Man 2, Thor 2. Mm -hmm. uh, but Winter yeah. Soldier was good, though. Sorry. Like, I kept the, the Captain Soldier, Soldier, but they didn't put a two in there, even yeah, though. Was, right. Yeah, they didn't, but it was the second one, though. Yeah. That might still be my favorite of all of them. Really? Mm hmm. Really really like you like Winter Soldier better than Civil War? Yes. I don't know I don't if know, I did. I don't know how I, I ended I up talking <laughs> to you. Now let's talk about the TV series. Are we, do no, we still have to listen no, to these gotta, yeah. we, have to, we have to do a whole other show <laughs> for that. <laughs> because the answer is Daredevil, um, but even this though it's technically resonate. not in the universe, for a but lot it is of reasons, now. But oh, yeah. It is right. now. It is now, yeah. It's the best all around. Let's see why it resonates. That's right. 
This has an effect, especially right. on guys, I think. We have a plan. Oh, oh yeah. Too. Especially on guys. Whoa. What are you talking about? We're going to see why it resonates. And then he says this has an effect on guys. Especially on guys. That's what I'm... Okay, let's. I I have to see why what this resonates and, and why yep. it resonates especially. Well, with teams. Arden, let's shut the fuck up. This is for them, not for us. Fair enough. <laughs> this is hope. Yeah, as the well. men are thinking here. There's Thor. <laughs> I'm seeing Thor. <laughs> They're still hung up on Thor's body. <laughs> <laughs> is that why it's resonating? Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Let's check out. That's this is such bad shit. Five years ago, we lost. This is the fight of our lives, and we're gonna win. Whatever it takes. Though. Good luck. He's pretty good at that. Right? <laughs> All right. You're the man. Stroke those keys, Jolly Green. He is good at that. Yeah. You promised to bring that back in one piece, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I'll do my best. His promises go. That was pretty lame. <laughs> <laughs> so, why is it resonating? Well, you get this heroic yeah. build up you get this this trauma it, to me it's like a it's almost like a rocky training montage and oh yeah if you remember watching those oh things, absolutely like, how many Eye times did you want to go work out as soon yeah, as you exactly. saw that training montage like, okay i gotta go watch I don't, i'm not even gonna watch it in the movie i gotta go work out because you're so <laughs> fired up and that's yeah. what that scene was it, but you have people from different groups coming together Plan, for one cause purpose fighting evil and it's their only chance teamwork they gotta get it done <laughs> Men love multiculturalism. <laughs> <People come. laughs> if anything, they absolutely. White Christian dudes, especially. Uh, known famously, for it. famously rely on other people instead of themselves. <laughs> and also, this is so fucking far out of order. They just like it. They had like a Thanos monologue, which is at the end of oh, the movie. True, you're right. You're absolutely right because yes, this takes place. They are time jumping here because this <laughs> before happened before the Soulstone like, scene. 40, obviously, yeah, 30, 40 minutes before that. Because teamwork. This is, this is this is when they're getting on the pad to go get the Infinity Stones. Yeah, mm -hmm. but this is they're saying this resonates with men in particular because it's about teamwork fighting evil. But they're advocating for a system where there is no teamwork fighting evil. There's just a god who creates evil, Ooh. and will eventually take care of it himself. There's no teamwork here. Jesus yeah, doesn't need us just... for shit. That sounds about right. Cool. I don't know well, why it resonates. There's we can or should do about it, except for no, be shitty to people who we don't point. like because reasons. Men like pep talks, apparently, is what he what we want to get to. <laughs> Summary, yeah. Uh, uh, Men desperately need? need to be guided. Mm. No, they don't. And Captain America that. is the best guider. Neither men nor women desperately need to be guided. Quiet, Shannon. The men folk are talking. <laughs> I would love for you to come here and say that to my face. <laughs> I'll tell you what. You, you come here and, and, and I'll say it. And then after you punch me, you can help straighten up my house. <laughs> I might only because I want to, though, when I couldn't. I know. Somebody's going to take that the I wrong way. As I if I suggested you, you, so should just come here. you need to watch the whole stream for that. Yes. That's right. Shannon volunteered to help us organize. I am not. I'll go outside and mess some shit maid. up, though. I'll do whatever, whatever I don't think needs to be in your house is just going mm. in the yard after this attitude. <laughs> we need that. Please. I need to be led. Okay. Um, we have Mel's Square Hole. For seventy five dollars, <laughs> wow! Thank you, Mel Square Hole. That is a, that is a deep cut. That that's is, a deep cut for my live that channel. That is someone who loves the yeah. So much cool. room for activities with no coffee tables, right? More more dance. We couldn't do the dancing. We do, do have the, dance parties in there. That is fair. Yeah. Uh, fifty dollar anonymous. Thank you so much. Thank and you. a five dollar anonymous. All. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Wait, you and I are both still here. How is that even possible? Can the audience hear us or are we hearing each other? How is it possible that Paul and Shannon got disconnected from this stream thing? You guys lost me, I bet. Oh, we oh, did. There you go. You're back. Yeah. My just went away. I don't know what was happening. We were trying um, to figure out how it was possible for me and Arden to still be here when you and Shannon dropped. Oh, interesting. And then uh, Shannon, now we have two Shannons. 
<laughs> but the people I'm in back. chat heard us, so it's Very all good. good. We good covered for you. In yeah, your that's why. That's one thing I like about this this streaming platform we're on. It, it keeps keeps the stream open, so that's good. Yeah, um, we're professionals. We covered that that's... with without a hitch. Nobody even noticed you were gone. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to scrub through and see what happens. <laughs> it's, it's, um, but it's I me totally and Arden you. being fucking confused. <laughs> <laughs> We're just like, oh, oh. Where did everyone oh. go? <laughs> now what? Uh, be, yeah, we got snapped out of existence, right? As I said, you know, <laughs> Darren got, was 50 wanting to. 50% of us got snapped. <laughs> wanting to snap MS out of existence. <laughs> there you go. That's one way to do um, it. Just get rid of all of us. I skeptics guess. and scoundrels. Eric, thank you so much. Don't worry, Shannon. I watched X Men back then too. Thank this you. one's for you, Morph. I think part of what it is is that Shannon, you are the only person in this group who is of the age that was watching cartoons at that point in history. I don't know True. what you're talking about. I'm 42. Yeah, and I'm 55. Uh huh. I would have definitely been watching cartoons in '97, but I probably was watching Blue's Clues. Oh, you were yeah, okay. So that I, maybe that is the thing. Like yeah, I, I think was. A I was right. a teenager, like young teenager. Right, yeah, I had just done eight years in the Navy and was starting a <laughs> career in software. And so the yeah. amount of time I spent watching mm -hmm. the X-Men uh, cartoon was minimal. But when the X-Men movies hit, I was all in. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think this is an age. It was an age thing, not a, yeah. That, that X-Men cartoon meant a lot of things to me. Like if you were, especially like if you were, a queer kid or a kid that was a little bit different like in any way because that x-men cartoon was basically about if you are on the outs of society this is how society is going to treat you but you really need to embrace who you are because who you are that's your superpower it it was i want to go mind back and watch them to me mind-blowing to me it was so relatable in so many ways on so many levels and like the X, that x-men cartoon and star trek were like real serious moral compasses that made me think that like they actually like proposed difficult moral problems to me and had me my young mind kind of like work through them and like figure out like so maybe sometimes there isn't a good guy and a bad guy maybe sometimes there are people that are trying to do a good thing and have bad motivations and maybe there's nuance to things like those those two things meant the world to me and rogue i identified with she was my everything and i didn't find out until recently like within the past four years that the woman who was the voice actor for rogue she's actually nova scotian and i found oh, her cool. and we follow each other on twitter now and she's she is still doing rogue's voice in the new series and i want to meet her she sometimes goes goes to halcon and i want to go and meet her so desperately because that character like a character that is the most powerful person in the world but can't touch or be intimate with anybody that she cares about like having that fear that if she gets close to anybody that she might hurt them and she can't hurt them. She still wants to protect them, but be close to it. Except they're I taking that it. away now with Magneto. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I totally, I mean, I didn't, I had other shows that were like that for me, like Avatar, the last airbender, I feel like was that for me. It was a show where I was old enough to like get the comp, the complexity mm -hmm. of the ideas and really connect with them on like a deep emotional level. So I, I get where you're like, why it was so big for you yeah it's huge you're making me want to watch avatar my kid does my kid watches avatar holy shit whoa we are over congratulations but we are we got six minutes left in the show so we're gonna see <laughs> see, yeah. see how high we can get uh not well okay. maybe matt might we'll see <laughs> I, i'm gonna get high after the show but <laughs> you can punish me with these two guys some more <laughs> Of course, the way these movies are, they throw in a little bit of humor as well. So yeah. it's, it's getting your spirits built up and you're getting the children and the humor as well. It's well it's, written. Yeah. It's well done. It is well done. And then at the end of the movie, during this final conflict with Thanos, so we saw the monologue a little bit ago. Right. Uh, the, the three heroes there, Iron Man and Thor and Captain America, are 
beaten. They're not dead, but Pretty they're much. beaten down. Uh, Captain America's shields in tatters. He's in tatters. And it's just him against Thanos and this entire army. And we're going to start a little bit of that clip, and then we're going to see, we're going to jump ahead and the see what happens. And, and that's why these movies resonate. You'll see. Please tell me they're going to go off a little bit on how there's a really tacky <laughs> scene with all the women. <laughs> they might. They might. Probably. Probably. I'm hoping they don't notice it. Because no I'm chance. not in the mood for the misogyny. Right. It's him against that army. There's no chance. He couldn't even beat Thanos by himself. So the courage to keep going. Yeah. To do to what's down right. Life, yep. No matter what. I love that visual. Yeah. One man against that whole army. On your left. <laughs> On your left. So you get this portal that opens. It's Doctor Strange opening these portals, and suddenly you get a whole bunch of portals, and you get all these people from all these different movies that they've been interacting with come together all at the same moment to help this battle. And let's get let's get a little we'll skip ahead to see some of that. I feel dumb. Cap's not alone. These He's got <laughs> right. About... Sorry, I missed that. What was... So it feels dumber. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I've watched fuck. all of these and I've watched this particular movie multiple times. I feel dumber having this person explain to me what's <laughs> going right. on. Yeah. The guy that's watched two Marvel movies. <laughs> yep. Um, cool. Good job, Noah man. <laughs> they were worried about spoilers, but I feel like you could watch this entire review and have never watched either For sure. of the like Avengers <laughs> like, and game movies. And Really, still have no fucking idea what actually. No, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, the disappointing thing is that they they shit on the early part that was about characters. Yes. And now yep. we're at the culmination of twenty three movies, and twenty five buckets of awesome is getting ready to spill out on film, and they're almost done and don't have a clue what they're watching. <laughs> <laughs> when this happened Unity. in the cinema like I, I literally like my body had an involuntary reaction and I cried like I actually cried oh totally so without being able to control huge. it coming together from different people groups different alien groups all yeah. everybody from different one people, people different galaxies all come together good versus evil in right. a sense Avengers! And then you get another 20 minutes of, yeah, of action. Sure, I'll battle. <laughs> yeah. and, and also, I mean, as you watch that, the scale so big, and of course, it's the culmination of all those. Yeah, no, they're done, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we're just not going to go into detail about any yeah, of that. We're not, we're not gonna... Why show it then? What was the there, point? There were these terrible scenes that were unnecessary, and then there's 20 <laughs> minutes of action. But let me tell you about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <sighs> Wow, these movies. guys seem like they'd be and really fun as to you're watch watching that, with. You, yeah. you feel like you're part of something bigger than yourself. Right? Mm -hmm. They're fighting for a bigger cause than just their legs are still in unison, though. So they're oh! <laughs> <laughs> they're not matching each other yet, though. Mm. They've only been apart and in the same direction. <laughs> Make <Knock> them touch. <laughs> lives even a bigger cause than their own planets or their own galaxy or their own solar systems. They're fighting for the universe mm -hmm. in a real sense, and so. I think that really speaks to us. It resonates because we understand there is something beyond ourselves. And we as human beings want to be involved in something that's bigger than ourselves. And there really is, there is a there real is battle there is between a real, battle. real good, true good, and really God, good. and evil. There is. The spiritual forces really. that Ephesians 6 talks about. Absolutely. No, there's there not. Is. <laughs> if God is all powerful and God wanted to eliminate evil, evil would just be gone. There's no such thing as a possible battle between an all-powerful God and anything. There can be no battle between the all-powerful and anything. There is no battle between good and evil. There's a conspiracy in your narrative between good and evil. That's what there is. Amen this battle going on this cosmic battle and then we get to play a role in that and those of us who have who have trusted in christ we're on the side that wins we already know the end Absolutely. what role do you play yeah, that's one of the in the battle between good and evil that can't possibly <laughs> exist i mean i love my superhero movies and yes i think you know that one of the appeals is that you put yourself in the in the perspective of the characters and maybe maybe i could be the heroic one of these days there's cosplayers at every Comic Con and Dragon Con, and good for you guys. Cosplay your ass off. These guys are basically admitting that Christianity 
is a really shitty version of superhero cosplay because they're in a battle between good and evil, except that their battle can't exist. Yep. We all get to pretend to be a part of it. <clears throat> it's wild. Movie, because evil in their conception, the too, did, is <laughs> harming God, right? Like, in their conception, is that what he God, was? Maybe? What's the gap Standing between what God. God wants you to do? Like doing something yeah. that God disapproves of or that God doesn't like. I often wonder if any of them have like any conception of psychology though, because they're like that's ascribing God negative emotional states, right? Like God would have to have a negative emotional state in order to feel as though it justified repercussions. Like he would have to be like, I am in a state of disequilibrium emotionally. And I would prefer to be in a state of full equilibrium emotionally. And if you're doing something that causes me disequilibrium, then that means that you get repercussions because ultimately you should be striving to have me at a state of emotional equilibrium. That's functionally what, what they're saying because they're ascribing God cognitive states. But what that means what that means implicitly is that we are capable of putting God into a state of emotional disequilibrium, which means that we like in our little nothing stupid spec lives that God created and instantiated and set forth and understands everything about. And in fact, like set in motion and knows how it's going to end did that either because he's a masochist who put himself into a state of disequilibrium <laughs> or or he has no control over us and we're capable of putting him in a, dis in a state of disequilibrium emotionally. And though that's qualitatively different, but both of them speak towards the fact that either we can have an impact of, on God or God is attempting to create a circumstance that allows the affect of the environment that he instantiated to create a negative state that he either like enjoys masochistically or sadistically. <laughs> and that he it, like he, he doesn't exist in a perfect state. Like all of that would mean that he couldn't, he doesn't just exist innately in a perfect state. If you acknowledge what cognition is and Most what emotional of, states are. I'm curious how God got to be the kind of person who's a sadist or a masochist. If, like, does God have a family trauma? Or he has no control. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the only options. He's either a sadist and he created a, a like a, a, compl a, a state of affairs that would put him in disequilibrium knowingly. He chose to do that because there there would be no other option, and and it, and is punishing the agents that he created specifically, knowing that that was going to be the end result. Or he's some sort of masochist and did it because he likes to be in the state of disequilibrium, which wouldn't justify the punishment. And the only other alternative would be that he has no control, which means that praying to him means nothing. Because if you recognize the, like, what cognitive emotional states, like, all of it seems as though it's an anthropomorphization. Like, mm -hmm. we're anthropomorphizing, like, our cognitive states on something that we decided that we're made in the image of. And thus, since we're made in the image of this thing, it must be in some way like us. But if you don't understand cognition and don't think deeply about it, then it just seems like, relationships are hard and you can you just view it on that level without like really analyzing what it would mean if the person in the relationship not only had all the power definitely like because you granted them the power but definitionally had all the power which is why i think it's like an abuse dynamic like it just breeds abuse dynamics because it's creating an environment where we see the best love that we are supposed to view as like the pinnacle of what love is, is definitionally either a sadistic relationship, a masochistic relationship, or a relationship that's abusive and out of control. And those are the only options.
I mean, that sounds about right, too, with a lot of Christian media. I feel like you see kind of that extrapolated out, too. Yeah. It's super unhealthy. And I don't like it. But people don't look at it that way because they're more interested in the philosophy, I think, of like the like the hard material aspects of it. But that's the stuff that interests me. Those dynamics and how they impact people. Anonymous gave us 1360 uh, and says, my wife works with A, the top MS doc in central Ohio and was super stoked to see you guys raising dollar bucks for this wonderful cause. Yay! Also, Spider-Man is the best and that's an objective truth. <laughs> He was oh, one of my no, favorites, for there's sure. There's no hyphen in your Spider-Man, so this is, I, this is actually, he means Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Like Norm, Spider Norm, Norm Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Anonymous. Appreciate uh, 666 from My Unfinished Journey. Uh, Hail Nero Caesar. And Shannon, don't let Paul find out that floors are level surfaces. Well, <laughs> he already knows. Know. <laughs> He's already acutely aware. And they don't they have collect to be. It's true. If you build your floor correctly, <laughs> it should all drain. It should all drain. It head towards one drain, so that when mm. you spill, it goes right down the drain. You can build floors like that. Yeah, you could. Uh, but they didn't know the yeah. end, director. Yeah, okay, yeah but, but they're still willing to lay down their lives. But right. if you've read scripture, you know the end. We know that that God wins. And, and what an amazing truth that as a Christian, you can be part of what God is doing to accomplish that eternal victory. Mm -hmm. All right. And we play, a, we play a part in that. It's his work, but we're in being involved in the process right. and he will use that for his glory and our eternal oh, good. That's cute. a glorious they thing. They think they're involved <laughs> in God's and process. Sorry. No, right. <laughs> hey, buddy, do you want to help me fix the car? Yeah, let's fix the car, Dad. <laughs> Is it already written in the book that no matter whether you help me or not, is I'm going to win? Yeah, it's going to win. <laughs> you are oh, when, uh, the um, oh gosh, what's his name? Big Papa Pizza. That you were part of of uh, of Doctor Strange's plan too. There, Big Papa Pizza that's in the right, yeah. alternate. Yeah. You, you, Yes, you you help, boys. Thank you so much. God God's gonna send you a, a thank you card for your help. You're watching these movies again. You know, th there are so many epic things in this film and some of the other ones. Uh, there are, there are a lot of admirable qualities that are being displayed, but there's also these ideologies that are that are snuck in there, and you have to be really yes, careful. Yes, because with the those characters things. aren't like the ones in the Bible. They're not one dimensional, except Archer Man. Uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> world's best Archer Man. Thank you very much, Bow Guy I'm 23. Him. <laughs> hey, they just ripped off <laughs> Arrow from the Arrowverse. <laughs> he was the world's number one Archer guy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, God. It's like you don't it's even also, have. We say, be aware of what you're watching. Be aware of the bad ideas, the the ideologies they're trying to teach you, and they're trying to smuggle into your brains, planting those seeds into the into the minds of your kids as well. So, talk through that, understand that, but also I would say point out where, hey, there are some ideas that have a biblical root and that good mm -hmm. things, self sacrifice, laying down your life, courage, unity, fighting evil, hope, hope. Those things are good, and they find their reality in Christ, and then use all that to talk about the bigger ideas, the the true eternal reality that we have in Christ and then share the good news with somebody. And so we love talking about this stuff. That's one of the main reasons why. And we encourage you here at Tilt Shift to keep guy? watching what you watch. Not See me. you guys. <laughs> I don't know if they conveyed a single coherent concept <laughs> that I would, I think they made a case for being actually biblical. I, not like not one. No, what they're saying is the good parts about this movie are also in the Bible. So if you liked this film, uh, you might also uh, like the, the Bible. The OG or my film. Noah fan fiction about the Bible. Mm. Is there... I think goodness. it's interesting that if you took all the money made by Endgame, uh, as a matter of fact, we'll just take $2 billion away from the profits of Endgame, and mm -hmm. Endgame still made $200 million more than passion of the Christ. <laughs> wow. 
after you remove two billion of its two point eight billion dollar profit, it still beats Passion of the Christ because Passion of the Christ got six hundred and twelve million dollars in a very in different fact, cultural climate. Which of the twenty three Marvel movies made less money than Passion of the Christ? Oh, the I'm less gonna... than six hundred. Well, just just the newest one, which we probably the newest don't want to talk about. No, oh. well. No, the newest, uh, the Marvels didn't make that much. I'm the sad Marvels. about the Marvels. I really liked the Marvels. Ant Man was ass. You can throw Ant Man in the trash after that movie. Yeah, I, I don't know but, if I would but, go so far as to say I really liked the Marvels. I I I really enjoyed it. I think it was really not because it was narratively good. They made a lot of mistakes, especially with their pacing. I think, but mm. I I really I don't know. I laughed. I had a really good time. The use of the song from Cats in the cat scene was like brilliant and so funny i i was like almost crying in laughter while i was watching and i love amon is it amon Vellani? um mm -hmm. claudia rambo no 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 miss marvel oh she was yeah, like the best part of the name. movie yeah the canadian girl far. he has great good canadian kid yep yes i thought he I is thought great she so like there... blew everyone else out of the water with her with her performance in that movie 10 of the 33 marvel movies have made less money than passion of the christ which means 23 Mm -hmm. Marvel movies have made more money than Passion of the Christ. Uh, and some of them aren't even close. Not that that's a measure of anything, but I mean, Thor Love and Thunder, which I think is among the worst, <laughs> still made $760 million. But Ragnarok was so fucking good. I yeah. really liked Ragnarok. Oh, I'm not yeah. willing to take comments about it because I just really did. I, I I enjoyed Ragnarok. I'm not even a huge Thor fan as far as the Thor movies go, and I I thought Ragnarok was okay. It's still the Same Thor thing. humor in general is not really my humor, but I at least enjoyed Ragnarok. But if that was the only proper Thor film that I actually enjoyed, was Ragnarok, and there was four. I love those brows in number so one far. though. I think I what mean, Matt's trying to might, say. I'm not gonna count them out. Like I'll still. I'm the kind. Like, I'll watch all of them. I'll be there yeah. on opening night. I'll fucking watch all of them. I watched She Hulk start to finish for fuck's sakes. All of I it. loved She Hulk. All. I Jen, don't miss John speech. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say love? Loved. Like, like you have strong positive feelings about She Hulk. Yes. Did you watch Daredevil? Yes, and Jessica all Jones and Luke Cage. Uh, Iron Fist is the shit one of all. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're on that team. Yeah. Both of us are on that but team. But Everybody's on that she, team. All of us. She Hulk <laughs> neutered. Uh, yeah. She Hulk neutered Daredevil in a bad. way that was. What I'm, did you. Why? I, I'm sorry, she, but I, I like when we go meta and have some fun. And that's what it was. Yeah, it could have done it better. It could have done that and not. The, the key to a comedy is it has to be funny. If it's funny, everything is forgivable. <laughs> I didn't think it was funny either. I thought I, I was trying I to do too many it. things at once. But I, I liked it. I, I, I was initially all about it, and then it, it just kind of fell apart at the end. So. He was the most excited about it because he loved it's the difficult. graphic novels. It's I really got it ranking those Disney yeah. Plus shows because I've genuinely liked almost all of almost all of them. Um, I think Werewolf by Night is way underrated. Oh, oh that was that. great. I, I agree with that. I like I, I, Moon Knight was brilliant, although was I'm okay. I'm nervous about whether or not I almost hope they don't continue it because I think they can only make it worse. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. hope okay, I hope okay. they never continue She Hulk at all, but I liked the fun. I I tell you the ones I thought were really weak were like the Baby Groot ones. Uh okay. And um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, while it had a chance to really look at all of the interesting things that happened, you know, during the blip, I just don't, for whatever reason, focus too much on action. I, I'm not a fan of Sam in mm. in really? any context, and it just it's I don't know. I really wanted Secret Invasion to be good, I but it did it just was... feel like a letdown. Tell kind me of. if all of us agree that Secret Invasion wasn't good. It's the as I was worse than it's the worst of all. However, as, far as I'm concerned, but. if I, all you ever watched were scenes with Olivia Coleman, it's one of the best. 
Mm. On the very end, though, the very end. I, okay, yeah, I don't like. Everything. I don't like the super. Uh, uh, fuck. What is the species called? The scrolls. The scrolls. scrolls. I don't yeah. like the super scrolls, and, yeah, and really definitely. Don't. I don't like Gaia. Being... I like the concept though. The invasion concept I think is right. really good, and I think well, it the comic been series so was awesome. amazing. But I just so, made yeah. her that Mary Sue we were talking about earlier. Yep. Like, right. <laughs> yeah. You can now, be Wandavision you and Loki were the best can... of the Disney Plus series. What was? Yeah, Loki. Wandavision too. and Loki. Yeah, I agree with that. I think Loki wins for me, just a little, little bit over Wandavision, but it's close. So, when's the next tilt shift? <laughs> so that, oh, so that I know so to, many. to so uh, to so they step. have also they've also reviewed Spider Man End Games or Spider Man No Way Home. So uh, right. if you guys are up for that sometime, we can definitely enjoy that. Maybe totally we'll cure MS next. Time. One of the best, one of the best Marvel movies, at least post End Game. No way. I wonder how they would do with that one since they don't watch like that one. You need to at least be a fan of the thing to care, right? Like, yeah, that's why have... it was the best to be there with like an audience that actually gave a shit, like on opening right. night, like when Charlie yeah. Cox shows up. Yeah, totally. And everybody's like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> like feeling it. And then you see Andrew Garfield and Toby McGuire, like people were we have feeling one that last... all together. Holy shit. One last donation to put in from Northern Spike gave $136. Thank you, uh, Northern Spike. Long time watcher of the channel. He also randomly also gave us just a $100 super chat. So uh, this geez. was very generous. Golly but, gee. Uh, well, thank you so much, everyone, for watching. This has been a lot of fun. We uh, For just letting us, giving us an excuse to hang out, which we should do more often anyway. Amen. Off camera. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, we're all on the line, so go watch the line. I guess we don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a show tonight on the line that we were in direct competition I'm with. Sorry. I know, and I'm one of the main money. hosts of that show. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> go the... watch tonight's Skep Talk. This was, mm -hmm. it was more of a scheduling thing, though, right? So it's go like watch Skep Talk yeah. after yeah. that. It's, the problem is that it's all tough of us for us. Are... Yeah. Go rewatch usually... Skep Talk. Exactly. Or join exactly. them. All right. Line. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate uh, Matt Arden, Shannon, for being here. Love you guys. And, we, and, and if you are watching this on replay, just by the way, it is not too late. Uh, up until the end of May, right, Shannon? They can they can still contribute to, yeah, to Team Yeah, so total. the walk is May, I think, 26th. So I can accept donations up until that point. So if you're watching on Either replay, late. it's not too late. Anyway. Please throw a donation in, and Shannon will reset the goal to... 80,000 or something? I don't no, know what you'll reset the goal I, I need to be something feasible because I don't like being disappointed. <laughs> I would rather be awesome. excited that I exceeded it than disappointed that I didn't make it. Well, we... Oh, we uh, it to, what are we at right now? 55, 22. Wow. You can go oh 10. Gosh, crazy. Easy. Is 7,500 insane? Is that no, what we... No, 10. That be I crazy? Just, no, you should go 10. Yeah, I think you can do 10. I don't think... What if I don't, though? But if you don't, then you still raise 5,500. <laughs> yeah, then you still raise your first goal way out of the but then water. Then I feel like I'd like... Thought I was cooler than I was. I love I was. the fact <laughs> that Shannon doesn't want to be disappointed, but keeps doing shows with me. <laughs> I love you. You're I love you friend. too. But you're wrong about uh, She Hulk. <laughs> no, All right. I'm not. <laughs> well, on that note, I'm not we're wrong gonna... about my subjective opinion about a show I don't like. <laughs> we're going to end the stream and we're going to fight the Hulks off air. Thanks, everyone. Have Bye, a good everyone. night. <laughs> Which would be a match. Bye. <laughs>